Other Levels podcast. I'm Justin Horror, joined as always by the triple OG, Willie Mason, and the man in the middle, DJ Tigertown, also known as Jared Reedy. <laughs> AKA Jared Reedy. Did you just drop one? <laughs> yeah, how do you feel about that? Is that okay? Is, is that. That's all right. Because people know who we are. It's like, I want to make sure that. Your, J-Rod. We can cut it out if, no, no, if it's no, drama. No, just J Rod. Yeah, yeah. J Rod Reedy. Let, let it run. J Reedy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, because I, I, uh, I Siri called you just before. Did and, you? and Mace goes, Is that his name? <laughs> yeah, it's always been fun. <laughs> yeah. She, he legit. He, 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 what the fuck is that? That's why, that's, why, that's why I thought I'd mention it because Mace was like, Who's that? I was like, it's fucking DJ Tiger. You were calling me Reedy for a little bit yeah. after um, after we finished up with the previous venture and then obviously the new name, new nickname kicked in and then you just haven't called me it ever since. Mm. No, nah, never. I mean, I've never called you Jared. I've been calling myself DJ Tiger Town in the third place. <laughs> Have you? Away away from you. Right. What what do the boys call you? What's your what's your nickname around fucking Picton Town? Oh, it's always Reedy because that's easy. That Reedy, nice and easy, yeah. Shout Reedy. out to Scottish Heritage because it's it's straightforward, read it, but um, <laughs> um, yeah, jazz, jazz up, J Rod, um, all that, J Rod, but like, yeah, the no one calls you J Rod, fucking J Rod, you just made J Rod up then. I'm a guitar teacher when I was 10. Dad, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my dad and my brother have been shit for a few fucking ages, but, um, no, um, no, at the moment, my nickname changes when you boy, blokes give me a different nickname, okay? So it was TNT from day yeah. night, now it's fucking DJ Tiger Town. So well, it might like, change after Magic Round once we once we're DJ Tigertown. See how you go. If if you're awful, you could the names could. It's, DJ's off. Yeah, it's getting hammered. Okay. You oh. lose the DJ. How long have we got to Magic Round? Three weeks, four weeks. Yeah, three or four weeks. Yeah, not too far away. Round ten, I think. So we're about to get into round six review and round seven preview because uh, obviously we missed Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, the studio here wasn't available for us, so um, we're going to smash it. It's a big episode. Before we get into the episode, though, like and subscribe. Almost at five kog. We're building nicely. Nice. Uh, if you're watching and not subscribed, quickly hit it now because it means a lot to us. Uh, we want to keep growing this. Just grateful for uh, what are we? Six weeks in, six reviews, six weeks, seven. Wow. Well, so seven weeks in because we've done seven previews. So preview, yeah. yeah, there you go. So it's been a good good seven weeks. We're pumped with it. We're pumped to have our partners. Tab and both B and C on board. We love uh, all the stuff that we do with them. We'll get to uh, the odds a little bit later on. OG, let's get straight into it, eh? Oh, yeah. do you want to just tell us how you Easter? We just had Easter, so I suppose it was a little bit of a different weekend. How was your weekend? Get up to much for Easter? I didn't do much. Um, just family time, man. It was yeah. just like just just laying back, and um, I knew I had obviously we, uh, the boys played Friday, and we didn't have to. Uh, there was no train, so they had like Saturday, Sunday, Monday off. So till Tuesday we had off. So it was, nice. um, it was a good little break. You know, I think the play, I think the players needed it. It's been a lot, uh, it's been a pretty tough sort of four weeks, you know, like um, with the battles that they've been in. Uh, but it was just good just to just to fucking chill out, just at home with the family, man, mm. too much, and just relax, man. That's all I want to do, you know. It's not gone to those days where you just sort of. Oh, fuck, it's a long weekend. I want to go out. Mm. I'm like, it's a long weekend. I just want to fucking stay in. Yeah, can't you know wait. I mean? just can't wait. Can't to wait. Just up. put the feet up and just watch footy all weekend. Do whatever. Just hang out with the fam and just like just be just be chilled. And um, did you, you ever know, play in the Good Friday games back in the day? Were yeah, they were they around? They weren't. They weren't. They weren't that many. Because like, I missed out on the Easter Monday games for Para as well. Yeah, like I think we they were after play, my time. We I, I were playing somewhere around Easter, but it wasn't as big as it was with the um, you know, the iconic. Uh, Sam Burgess against Ennis. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those, yeah. those couple of rules. So it sort of, sort of started Kev. around 14, yeah, eh? Yeah, around about when 14, uh, 15. Yeah, James be... Graham and all those sort of blokes were around. So it started from there. Mick Ennis fucking, you know, going at, you know, Sam Burgess come off the back fence. Yeah. Dogs like, fans. That was from fucking, cans yeah, yeah dogs fans from cans. I mean, I think I was part of a different era with the Bull- Bulldogs fans. I was, they were still just as crazy, but you know, I think crazy. You know, South, <laughs> South weren't. They weren't. They didn't have yeah, Sam Burgess. That's right. You know, we 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 touted South up a fair bit, so it wasn't yeah. really wasn't really much of a match. So they didn't make it like a match. When yep. South sort of come back. It wasn't until Raza went over, right? Yeah, Roy. When he started there, to build up the Rabbitohs. Started, yeah, about the nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen ish. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, something like that. They, they had some really good battles there. So, mm. um, yeah, I, yeah, it wasn't 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 a thing. Mm. You know, and and, the, and just the atmosphere out there would have been cool to be a part of it. Though, eh? it I think mad. they want to watch all the Parramatta games. 
Yeah, our, mainly, watching your, mainly, watching ours, your mainly ours was probably the biggest games was against Parramatta. Mm. You know, if we didn't matter what day, if it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's fucking on. Generally, use a Friday, eh? Yeah, but if I'm just talking about the mad. Easter weekend specifically, yeah. DJ Tiger Town. I honestly can't remember the Easter weekend. Like, um, you know, back in the day, what day we played? Or we, I don't, I don't, I don't think was, there. there I, never, ever I don't like think a, there was anything for it, bro. Specifically, like until like maybe we had fourteen to do or fifteen a lot of promos. For fucking the Easter show. Yes, I remember doing some stuff you know like what that. I mean? like, all I remember, and we stuff played like on just say like a Saturday to shit time or whatever it was. Mm. It was never, it was never a big thing. No, was it between? And like, it wasn't I'm locked in with the any, teams who yeah, the teams yeah, were playing each other. In. It wasn't yeah. aligned with the team, and then they started, you know, with the South Bulldogs sort of rivalry. This is going to go on for fucking ages. Mm. Um, and the Tigers power on too. And the Tigers power. So like you know they've, they've um they built this really good healthy rivalry. There's nothing dirty about it, and um. It was just a shame that they got away. They got away with fifty. Mm. You know, we're in that game, fair. Mm. You know, we'll, we'll get we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, when we we'll get to the footy. But, um, what about? Yeah, it was a good weekend. Other than that, chilled out at home, relax. J Dog, how was your weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking J Dog. <laughs> What did I get up to? Uh, Thursday night, caught up with some friends. Friday. I saw you on Instagram sending us what, some fucking pics, eh? Hey? Yeah, you've been getting after the last couple of weekends. Yeah, Friday night I got blasted in the mountains and then I've been texting <laughs> Scott and said, thanks for looking after me, brother. Love you always and got nothing back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you even fucking checked it. Nothing. Scott. <laughs> 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 Yeah, he's, or he's like, cold hearted, man. You got to come better with that. I thought, oh, fuck, man, he doesn't like me. So. No, no, I love you, brother. I'm just, I'm ice cold like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's all right. I, I don't, I don't go throwing that shit around. Yeah, I saw it. I was gonna fucking block you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to kick you out. Of, I was going to kick you out of the fucking Mate, group. I was probably looking at my baby, and I go, "Look, I love her, hundred yeah. percent." And then you're telling me you love me, and I'm like, "I think I love my baby more." Yeah, <laughs> so I didn't reply. I can back that. I can back that. Uh, Wait, but mouth? I love your work, bro. I, I love it. I love seeing you get after it. Yeah, uh, consumer. It was grouse. Um, yeah, just a couple of pubs, a couple of breweries. Cold. Yeah, oh, it was pretty Nothing nice. Crazy. Saturday, Friday was okay. I uh, went and saw the Three Sisters, which was... Boring as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Big rocks. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. No, nah, that was all right. And then um, went home went home Saturday and lit my wounds. And then Sunday, Monday, kicked back. Watched all good. Monday, and that was about it. So. I mean, you really, yeah, really good poked weekend. your eyes out on the Monday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one hurt. Oh, yeah. I, I, I said said that on the group. It's going to hurt. Yeah, look, and that was just before Stain dropped the ball. I was fucking... Hey. Yeah, there's only one team I fucking hate more. Mm. It's Para. Mm. I wanted you guys to win. Mm. Who are your most hated football team? It's Para. Anyone else? No. T- Tigers a second. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because you. you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Just you. Yeah. Uh, Just you. Like you, bought him, you bought him from 10th to 2nd. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. So what was your biggest takeaway from round six? Biggest takeaway from round six, I've been seeing a lot of – obviously, everyone's seen the block plays. The mm. Cam Murray's, you know, getting the ball first um, from nine – I mean, from the nine. Block play, lead runner, go out the back. Yeah. You know what I mean? We see, we see a lot of that. And I'm like, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of guys, there's a lot of players that I don't think really have that skill set. And everyone's sort of chasing that lock, the Isaiah, the Cam Murrays, the Victor Radleys. You know what I mean? Like, And I'm like, just play to your cattle. The fifth man of the spine, if you don't have it, yeah, you don't have it. Don't- Here's one there for you though, Mace. Uh, an example, who's probably the best team that doesn't have a ball playing middle that's doing the best, you reckon, who, that you can look I at? I think, I reckon Canberra. Yep. Canberra. Because, Horsburgh. Because they, they know... And Horsburgh does it a little bit. He's well, he's only got, just got there too. He's actually though. got some real good skill, but he fucking plays tough. Mm. You know what I mean? Like they're all they're all rough riders down mm. in Canberra. Mm. They just fucking run hard. They tackle hard. They know their skill set. They know their strengths. They don't try and play out the back. They don't try and play real square like the Cam Murrays and all that kind of stuff do. They they just play to their strengths. Mm. You know, I think we play to our strengths. When we yep. when, when everything's going good, yep. Um, you wouldn't think, have an allocated. Uh, no, n- we don't have a we don't have a designated ball player. Yes, you know what I mean. Like I think we I think Brisbane do it well mm. because Carrigan knows he's six foot four and a hundred and I reckon he's about buck ten. Mm. He's mobile. He can run. He gets that really good shape, but usually he just digs in. You know what I mean? It's just a little. There's a couple of little. There's a couple of players there. There's a couple of teams there. They probably just try and do it too much when they don't dig into the line enough. Do you know what I mean? So just say if you haven't got a genuine 13 who can dig into the line like Cam Murray. I wouldn't bother. Yeah, that's what I mean. But yep. there's a couple of them. That's what I was seeing on the weekend. Yeah. Um, 
The Warriors don't do it that well. Can I add one to you with yeah. Canberra as well? They were trying to do it with Whitehead. I think they fucked it off. Yeah. Put Whitehead back on the edge now and Horsburgh yes. through the middle because they realised it wasn't working. Because Horsburgh can actually do it. He's got, mm. some, he's got some really good skill and he mm. runs hard, but he can choose and pick and choose when he runs. He knows when to run. He's run first. But yeah, he's yep. a run first mentality. Yep. And um, I just think with some teams, like if you're going to go, if you're going to dig into the line, just say you're catching the ball, play the ball's there, you're catching it B, you're trying to get to C, right? You're trying to get C to, you're trying to get C to try and turn his shoulders in a little bit, but you've got to dig into him. Yeah, you've got to go in. You can't be like passing, and a lot of halves do this as well. Mm. They're petrified of the line. They're passing like three or four meters away from the line. It's not just your locks. It's if you, so. If you don't have that ball playing lock, it's your seven who's doing it. Yeah, and some sevens are petrified of the line. They won't go. They won't go near it. Mm. So they're passing about probably four meters Too before early, yeah. the line. It becomes all, pointless. All forwards are doing are coming up, checking, and then just going. Might fucking, as well just go quick hands. Yeah, hands quick hands. Do. Just get the ball out of your fucking hands. Don't try and look mm. all fancy and just play fucking all these little block shapes just because it looks cool. Mm. Like, don't do it. Just get the ball out of your hands, play bang, 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 get on an edge as quick as you can. Because all we're trying to do, what most teams are trying to do, is get to the three man as quick as you can. You don't have to have block plays and all that kind of stuff, especially if the seven is doing it. Mm. Just pass the ball to the other prop and then pass the ball again. Like They've got that skill set to do it. So I've been seeing a lot of it. I'm just like, fuck. If you don't have it, simplify If you don't have it, simplify it. But, yep. the, but the halfbacks are going in there because half these halfbacks are the most protected guys in the comp. Yep. They're fucking petrified of the line. I see it all the time. I'm just like, why, why even try and do it? You might as well just get it at first receiver and just zing it straight to the back row of the front row. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that was my biggest takeaway. I'm like, yeah, unless, unless you got the Isaiahs, unless you got the, play to your the Cam Murrays, and all that, play to your strengths. And if your halfback's petrified of the fucking line, just don't even go. Don't even try and get it. Just get it off him, and let him pass the ball. Yeah, you know I what like I mean. That. Like it's just, I, I just, I just feel like you're just wasting a lot of energy. You know. So like that's that was my takeaway. Yeah, I like it. And even, I'm thinking about a couple other teams as you go on the Warriors as well. Tohu Harris has a little pass in his game, but realistically, he's trying to get forward um, yeah. when he plays lock. I think more they more focus on that ball plane lock when Dual Walker comes on. Yeah. So some teams might have it on their spine, I mean on their bench, but not necessarily in their starting lineup. Yeah. So Newcastle's another example. Kurt Mann, when he comes on, yeah. uh, if he starts, obviously he's got it in, but he yeah. he doesn't have the size and the presence that those other, do, uh, other guys have. So yeah, that was a good one. My biggest takeaway, mate, from round six is one thing that I think a lot of people were – worried about with regards to the Dolphins is they got no big marquee players in particular on their spine. Um, I think they might have it. I think they might have it. Hamaso is on fire. Yeah. Um, he's playing perfectly to the style of system that they're trying to play. At, and he's... It's just typical Wayne. He's just playing to what his strengths are. So Hammer's not going to try to strip you with the grouse out the back. It's just like you're talking about with the with the five men's one and the 13. Hammer's not going to try to do the grouse out the back, Reese Walsh, double cut out, hit mm. uh, sell and cobble or whatever. Yeah, he gets out the back on shape and he runs that block shape, but more often than not, it's either tip on or he's going to run and that's how he's going to test the line. He's not going to overcomplicate it. He's on fire and I think he signed a two-year deal there at uh, Redcliffe. Or at the Dolphins at yeah. Redcliffe um, and then you look at the half have, can't be more impressed with Isaiah Katoa at the moment yeah. um, he's playing half now I think he's playing 18 right he's playing the 7 role yeah he's like 18, 19 I always heard these massive raps that they had on him at Penrith coming through the grades but for the first couple of weeks I'm like oh yeah you know seated in the World Cup some nice touches oh yeah this kid but the more I watch him the more I'm impressed because um, I feel like he's got way more in his repertoire. Yeah. But because, again, bringing it back to Wayne, not overcomplicating it, just doing it in the moments, specifically um, that little run at the start of the year where he had that nice little uh, block play to Hamaso when he scored against yeah. Canberra. And there was another play against Newcastle where he did the little chip over the chase, uh, chip over the top in the Newcastle game as well. So I'm looking at him going, shit, this kid's got everything in the bag, but he's not really... Um, Overcomplicating it because it's not required. They've got so many fucking leaders. Um, they've got a real physical middle that they're winning these certain games. But I can see the development in them. Mm. And the and the and the best one out of all three, um, Sean O'Sullivan's a part of that spine too. Don't get me wrong. I think he's going to be a, a fine um, stopgap sort of half. I don't see him as a franchise half. I think he's going to be perfect for Redcliffe until they find maybe yeah. another guy that'll complement Isaiah Katoa. I think he's the future. And then obviously Jeremy Marshall King. Mm. 
he's on he's just trending up every single game every time I said watch him play uh, he's on the he's putting himself into the conversation for a, a top hooker in the game yeah, and he's, like he's, I, th- he's, I I thought it might if be he's a not top bit, five he's just out he's in, in the like he's putting himself in the conversation yeah, right, but I'm, yeah, I'm just saying, if he's not, who's your top five? So, up he's still, Harry Cookie Grant. Cookie's still on fire. Harry Grant. Harry Grant and Cheese, they'll yeah. still be in, like they're, cause, just because of how long they've been doing Marnie, it. Marnie, Reed Marnie, I think he's up there. Reed Marnie. See, look, the, now you start getting in the conversation, yeah. right? You're a Bulldogs guy, you've, you've, you, whatever. Even if you're not a Bulldogs guy, if you're watching this from an outsider, man, Jeremy Marshall King. I don't know what he's coming in the Daily M um, ladder, and he and he missed a couple of weeks, but he's been on fire, bro. And I just think yeah. I look at those three guys with the the leaders, and I watched the doco too because um, I got told by a couple, you know, a few people to watch the Is doco. It good? I haven't seen unbelievable, it yet. Yeah. mate! Unbelievable. It's worth it. Just you would have seen a lot of this stuff from Wayne, so yeah, it's probably not be as interesting uh, for you. But um, just to see about the recruitment, why he got Jesse, why he got that's Kenny. That's what I'm more interested in. The, the recruitment. That's why, like everyone's like, you recruited wrong. You recruited wrong. Yeah. No, I didn't. What? I recruited fucking first grade men, mate. And to be fair, he swung and missed it a few. So like, I'm watching this doco throughout the week over the last couple of weeks, and I finally got to the third episode, and I'm watching it. You know, misses out on Munster, misses out on Ponga, misses out on Ryan Madison. Misses is Taruva goes there like all these players like it's not just top shelf players but there were a lot of players that they were mm. missing on that would you know they were having a crack at and uh, and then I watched the game on the weekend they played the Cowboys and I'm like just because I'm fresh from watching the documentary I'm like man they're not required and that's respectfully to those boys they're fucking big name players one of them would have been unreal I think like if you could have Maybe, and, but this is the thing, right? While I was watching it as well, I'm almost playing devil, devil's advocate with myself straight away, but I'm watching this going, fuck, would we see this Isaiah Katoa for what he is right now, six weeks in, if they had got Munster, if they had got Ponga? No, I, I Maybe not. Munster plays six, he plays seven. And I O'Sullivan, with O'Sullivan, right? O'Sullivan wouldn't even be in there. Yeah. Oh, I think O'Sullivan, no, I, I reckon O'Sullivan would have started with either Munster, Ponga, maybe someone like that. Oh, right. Okay. Um, and then we uh, Katoa would have taken a little bit longer because they still had Milf too, right? Yeah. So, um, my, I'm just super impressed with Dolphin Spine. Wayne's done a great job. Those boys are obviously doing a great job and they're led from a um, a great forward pack, a good forward pack to be, be a part of. And Big Felice comes back this week. So, oh. they're only going to get better, man. Big game yes. coming up, which we'll get to as well. But yeah. my biggest takeaway, Dolphin Spine. Nice. My, I think it's the best young spot. Like, it's the – if you're looking for – Definitely for value. How old's um, Hammer? Hammer's only like, nah, he'd be only 21, 22, um, DJ Tiger Town. Check that 23, shit. 23, I reckon 20, 24. 21. Fuck. Fuck, bro. <laughs> and Katol would be 19. 9 plus 10. Um, <laughs> and Jeremy Marshall King, he's close to, he's, he's younger than my brother, Zay, so he'd be about 26, 27. Yeah. So I was 19. You on JMK? Yep. He'd be 26. 27. 27. Uh-huh. But that's still good. He's got a good fucking that's four to five prime. years. Mm. No, that's prime. Mm. He's in his prime right now. Optimus. He, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's in his Optimus <laughs> right now. Because he had like, he had his, you know, about like, you know, he come to the Bulldogs. He was, a, he was a seven or six. He wasn't a genuine nine. Last couple of years, solidified himself as one of the best nines in, you know, he's a, he was a top 10 nine in the Dogs the last couple of years in a, win, in a losing side. And then... Did he Not. get your player of the year last year for the yeah, dogs? Player of the year. Yep. Fucking killed it last year. He would, yeah, well, I, I, I remember why, he was gone. Because, I just because I was Reed trying Marnie, to think who else Because Reed Marnie is like probably younger and like a genuine nine mm. and they love they want to have him back. And then I think the offer that they that he got offered from at the Red time was massive. At the time, Reedy had had two to three really solid years and was trending Borderline up. Borderline origin. And he's Jeremy, fucking on it. I, he's one. He's one of those ones we talk about it with um, Angus Crichton last yeah. year, who they got their deals done for Fida now at the Titans. Mm. Sometimes the security of getting your deal done can just fucking really yeah. make a player come into his own because. Um, in particular with Jeremy Marshall King, it's more like, all right, Dolphins, yeah, they missed out on a few guys, but Dolphins have shown that they want me to be their guy. And I think mm. he just got upgraded for him already. Yeah. So, yeah, Dolphin Spine for me. Yep. OG, can you hold up that high-protein vanilla for mm. me? Get it up. Gladly. And make sure you don't smack too much of it. We're only going to do the, the correct dosage That's this the week, one. OG. All right, Mace, while you've got that up, that is the great 
tasty and high protein, low carb blend of quality protein. The perfect combination of both fast and slow release proteins to provide energy for optimum performance and muscle recovery. Why keeping you feeling satisfied for longer? Including added digestive enzymes for a happier tummy. Right in the tum. Uh, it's currently available in Woolworths too. So for anyone, go and get it. It's in Woolworths. Or you can also get it online at bodyscience.com.au and in independent supplement retailers. And you can treat yourself to a bit of the protein shake as well. Get that. That's the grouse. I've just Ta- been- Tiger Town, you ever thought about taking this, sir? You, you, need, you need a bit you, of protein, do you? I use um, a USB C's creatine. <laughs> no, you don't. You oh, do okay. not use anything, you liar. <laughs> don't, yeah. <laughs> That rig, that rig, I've does. seen that rig. I know you're trying to look after the brand. You're a good man. You're a company man. I love that yeah. man. But I, I you need to be better. I have it in my house. I'll send a photo to Shay's in the group chat. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, while we're at BSC, let's get into our BSC dog of the week. OG, we're oh, unanimous in this one, but dog. you kick it off. You the tell dog. us who it is. I've got it. Mate, they beat Brisbane. It's the best team in the comp. Everyone Undefeated. Like, you know, Undefeated. And this guy named Corey Horsburgh. A fucking Horsburgh. I just fucking love the way, the kick pressure, all the little things. I like just say his stats wouldn't have been like out of this world. He wouldn't have, he wouldn't have done the, the town below low sort of meters or anything. I'm going to hit his stats up now. Oh, I love that you brought I this think, up because I had the same thing written down. We hadn't know, even like, spoke about it until the car on the way in. Go I was ahead. Just like, I was like, you know what? The kick pressure, all the little things that he does is so annoying to like to the best players. 71 minutes played. 13 heat ups, 88 meters. That's not so. That's not ridiculous. You know numbers. why, Mace? And, and I want to. 40 tackles. I want. I want to tell the. I want to tell the punters and and uh, and the and the and the people at home as well. When you play with, so you get 13 carries for 88. It's not. You know, a lot of these guys. Play, you know, people play super coach or they yeah. watch and they're big stats guys. <sighs> The reason he's got 13 carries for 88 metres, which aren't... They're still good stats without being great. Still a solid 71 minutes. is because he's in fucking every kick chase. He kick pressured the shit out of Ren all night. Even gave him a little spray when he kicked it out on the the full. And then he was also that guy. I think it was Huddy Young come up, put kick pressure on. They shifted. And big Horsburgh. He's the one that made that tackle when they tried to shift and run it on the last as well. Horsburgh took him out. And you know what I'm loving about him? It's a bit like uh, Triple OG Mudders that we had last week, right? Horsburgh's a (laughs) Fucking another Mudders. Mudders Horsburgh. And he gets up and he just goes, he's becoming one of those dudes now. Uh, about six weeks ago, he had a mad tackle. Um, before, you know the game that he scored? Not six weeks, probably earlier than that. You know he scored two tries? Two tries. Best moment of this game. He comes on, he brings that energy that I've been talking about for a while now. Mm. Mad kick chase tackle, gets him in goals, and he gets up and he's pumped, you know. Yeah. He, he looks around at the boys and he's all fired up. Now... He takes Ren out, kiddies. I love you know that shit. I love it when they he just sa- like sounds, play it off. He sounds like a new um, sort of dog breed <laughs> or like a horse breed. He's like, what's that? Yeah, it's got a, like a real orange sort of ginger <laughs> thing. They're like, that's a, that's a, it's a, it's a horse bra. That's a horse bra. That's a horse bra. Oh, what's that one? Oh, what's, is, what's, what's, is that a mix of something? What sort of horse is that? <laughs> oh, it's cut between this. This is a. Oh, it's a horse and a dog. Bra. It's a horse yeah, and a dog. Yeah, like, and, it's, and they call it a horse bra. They call yeah. it a horse bra. Yeah. The, at the back of the barn, there's, you know, there's some, some weird thing happened goat, between a dog and a bad red goatee and a little bit of a fucking. It's a little billy goat. Little billy goat. Yeah, a little billy goat. Little red billy goat called a horse bra. And a little and it was like a and a dog. It's like all mixed mixed into three. It's a horse. It's a mythical. Unicorn, horse, <laughs> goat, it's a fawn. donkey. Like the cunt of Narnia. Yeah, he's a fawn. That's what he is. Oh, you've, you've, you've hammered the you've hammered hook. Yeah, don't. You take it easy on the horse, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he should be a mythical what's his, creature. What's that? Numbness or... Uh, tumness. Tumness, yeah. He's a watcher. Yeah, but he's, he was outstanding. He's my fucking dog of the week. Yeah, horse. Corey horse, bro. I'm with you, bro. The first... Our first ever unanimous yeah. dog of the week. I said, when we're driving, I go, oh, bro, I'm going with horse, bro. Yeah. Yes, so am I. I said, little, little, little things, Let's man. keep it together. So the BSC dog of the week. The dog Corey of the week. Corey horse, bro. Unbelievable. Kick chase. All the little things. Um, also want to give the shout out for the team so um, we're going to be doing some stuff with the BSE team yeah. um, as we're a part of it you know posted on the socials recently we've already done the shoot with the captain of Australia captain of New South Wales no biggie Good Sir job. Teddy James Tedesco shout out to Teddy congratulations um, too you little baby you got, got a little baby on the way yeah, Teddy. Um, and also Paige Hadley Maddie and Teg- Tegan and Levi from uh, the, the Union Girls Callum Robson and Matt Bevy part of the BSC family we're uh, grateful to be a part of the family as well um, alright one last thing before we move in just for tab as well we've got a tab times NBA 
Origin Activation. Uh, so we'll, we'll chuck a link in, into our bio. It's Tab Origins 2 vs 2 Tournament. Win tickets to the NBA Finals. So go and hit that link in there. And the OGs and the official wagering partner of the NBA are giving you a chance to win a trip to the NBA Finals. Fucking mad. If you are in Melbourne, head down to Urban Square this Saturday, the 15th of April. 12:30 p.m. to catch some street ball, DJs and food trucks. It's going to be grouse. I'm just filthy now that I'm reading this out. The tab has invited us down, mate. Why aren't we there? But we'll get onto them. Maybe we can be a, a lady. Actually, I can't this weekend. I'm busy. But sounds like a grouse day. Uh, like I said, go into uh, go into the bio. We'll share it on our story as well. Tab. It's uh, taborigins.com. Two on two tawny. It should be grouse. I was speaking to um, speaking to Bells from Tab about it the other week. Actually, when we we're at the races, and uh, fuck, would be a cool we little be event. Down there. Yeah, next Come time we'll, we'll be in there next time for sure. But how good's that? Winning a tick. We, Win a prize trip to the NBA Finals. Just about to start the too. Finals. The playings just started. Shit. I think LeBron, the Lakers. Yeah, yeah. They LeBron, just knocked. They just beat. They just beat the Mavs. They just knocked no, off um, uh, Timberwolves. No, Timberwolves. Yeah, Timberwolves. Timberwolves. I like Ant Edwards too. I like the Ant. He's good. But King James is always into that shit. Don't uh, they? Can't get out of the. They can't get out of the West. They can't. It's going to be a good one. We'll get into more of that stuff maybe uh, as the weeks yeah, go on. Sure. But all right, this one is a little bit different. Sorry, TNT. Normally I throw to you as well. Uh, DJ Tiger Town, J Dog, uh, Tumnus. Um, <laughs> 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 topic one. So we've talked about it, Mace. You know I love my uh, press conferences, particularly the losers. The depressors. So so someone messaged Sad me. Fetish. Someone someone messaged me. Goes skip. You've got to you've got to have a segment. Your favourite. We're going to kick it off. This would normally be on a review show, even though we're doing both. So this will be on review. But scopes the presser of the week can't go past our man Toddy Payton. Big Rod, big Rod, big Rocket. I heard, I heard. So I'll re- I'll, for for people that didn't um, see the uh, see it yet, I think there's been a few reports on it. I'll just read exactly what the the quotes were. He goes, uh, the question was, are you happy for Hammer? That was the question. This is how it started, right? Really? Yeah, that's how it started. And he goes, not disappointed or bitter, Peyton reveals. Like, I'm paraphrasing. I'm sort of bringing it in. Eh, not a, yeah, right. not all of it. Um, I'm not surprised at his form, Peyton said in his uh, losing depressor. Look, we made a decision around Hammer based on some of the words and his actions at the back end of last year. I'm not disappointed or bitter about him playing well. He's a nice kid. He left here a better person and a better footballer. The Dolphins are reaping the rewards of some of our hard work Ooh. and his application and talent on the pitch. <laughs> Plenty of that. It was a roller coaster. So he's like, obviously, so something. All right, let's break it down. It was so he like asked that. me. So it was like, the, I, I believe the question was, I watched it too. This is before, like, I'm watching this, you know, I watch this shit straight away. I'm feeling this shit because, like, man, Dolphins did a number on Cowboys. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait did, to watch this did. shit. I'm like, I'm all fired up to watch this fucking <laughs> mad depressor. And then he goes, um, I'm so already I, on I believe, YouTube. I believe the question. No, I didn't even have to watch YouTube. I'm just like, stay straight on yeah, Cowboys. something else on I just, Yeah. <laughs> Miss, me, Mrs. Comes, Kai comes in. She goes, can we watch something else? I said, no, no, no. Depressors are still fucking, we've got to get the depressor. The game's over. Um, so he goes, um, the question was, you must. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was, someone might correct me, but I'm pretty sure it was, it must be bittersweet to see Hammer doing so well against you. Um, you know, what a set up, but What and a set up question. Well, I don't think Fuck, it was. Big Rod should have been smarter than that. I, no, well, see, this is the thing. I think it was, I believe, my interpretation is it was genuine. I could, You know, you can tell the difference, right? Just say if you can like, I'm he- you can hear it in their voice. I think it was genuine, but just say. He should have yeah, played it down. Yeah, but played it right down. But. There's obviously a shitload in it, and that's yeah, why I love it. You must have known. And this is why it's a fucking great <laughs> week one depressor. So he goes, I'm not surprised at his form. Look, we made a decision around Hammer based on some of the words and his actions at the back end of last year. Ooh, what did he say? So did you dig deep? No, I didn't have to. I'm just I'm I'm not I'm not, I'm not saying I didn't have to, but I'm just I like to read between the lines. Fuck yeah. it. You know, I don't, you don't need to do any digging, go message the boys or anything, but he's, there's obviously been a, a blow up at the back end of last year. But Again, Hammer was playing fucking five or ten minutes. I love Todd Payton too. This, by the way, yeah. when I do these depressors, if it's I don't give a fuck if it's Wayne. I don't care if it's Seabold. Mm. I don't care if it's on this week. It's Payton. Yeah. I'm going after the coaches. I love depressors. I love them. They're the best. But um, 
obviously at the back end of last year, Tamil wasn't getting some time. Um, I think he was still on contract at the Cowboys, got a release to go to the Dolphins. Yeah, yeah. So obviously that plays into it as well, but can't blame him with the form that he's shown this year. No. So he's he's it's like one of those things. It's like, like I said right at the top there, the, the question was genuine, I feel like, and uh, – I reckon it was pretty ordinary from uh, from Toddy Payton, who I like as a coach. I really do like him as a coach. I reckon he's got this one fucking way off. And said like he's left a better person, yeah. better player. Yeah, they're reaping Not, the nothing, rewards. Nothing to do with uh, like Wayne or anything mm. about the Dolphins or himself trying and to he's, improve as a player. And he's normally pretty respectful to Wayne too. So I don't think it's in between. I don't think it was. I don't think it was anything to do with Wayne. No, nah, he's just, just filthy at Hammer. With, he's filthy we, at Hammer. We've. Um, we put a lot of time and work into you. Yeah, you're still on contract, and we're filthy that you left. Yeah, exactly. But he should be. Un- he should understand. He was never. He wasn't. He was playing. Nothing. He was too good to play he off the bench. He was too good to play. Yeah, too good to play off the bench. Drink water. Took his spot, and you can't play a kid like that off the bench. Mm. So he didn't really have to go into it. He didn't have to. He didn't no. have to. He I thought, thought he was just sort of just. He, hey, he was just pissed off. Fucking oath he yeah, was. He'd be pissed off at his team at the moment. So he's like, "Fuck mm. it. You want to mm. ask me one of those questions? I'll give it to you." Mm. And you got to love Rod about that. Yeah, yeah, a bit yeah. real. It was, it was real. Like yeah. it was real. He's yeah. not. He's not sugarcoating anything. He's not going. Hey, yeah, good on Hammer. You know, blah blah blah, and then yeah. le- leave it at that. Yeah, filthy. Nah, fuck it. Yeah, we put a lot of time and work into that kid, make him a better person, better player, all this kind of stuff. Not saying that he is not a bad, not a bad person anyway, regardless. Mm. But. Mm. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. I love that shit. I love what you, I love them sitting at home just going, yes. Like, <laughs> as soon as I hear something, I'm like, ooh. You, what like, was that? That was that was unnecessary, but fuck, it's I love it. Very unnecessary. I love it. <laughs> I can get it because I'm like he's starting to show signs that he's like, all right, there's a yeah. little bit, of, you know, like those are those are early signs. Are like, shit ain't going my way. I hate it. All right, I'm gonna deflect on something. Yeah, <laughs> someone's gonna get it. <laughs> so, I'm not. He's not targeting yeah. his players yet, but he goes. He Hammer's gonna get he's it. He's not this Wayne. Week. He's not like you know, yeah. like the Craig Bellamy's and uh, stuff like. That. He's still, you know, he's a relative pressure new man. Coach. Th- th- what second year in the game? This is why I love it. Pre- it's fucking the worst job yeah, in the world. Man. They couldn't pay me. Or well, they probably could actually. They could pay me the right number to coach, but um, I wouldn't want to do it, mate. Mate, this, nah. the pressure that comes on these coaches is hilarious. It is, man. You know, being being a part of the, a coaching system now, yeah. Just like with the pathways, with everything that we're doing, I'm just like fuck. Even like an SG ball coach looks under the pump. Yes, I'm they like, are. I said, My dad used to come home said, fucking losing sake, his hair. It's just, like, it's just the game. You got to teach his, teach his kids fundamentals and mm. stuff like that. Let alone the first grade, reserve grade, jersey flag, all that kind of stuff. Man, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty hectic, eh? Oh yeah, that was a good you, one. Good depressor day for week one. Eh? And shout out to I'm supposed to give him a shout out, but um, great name, love it. Good segment. And we could. There's some uh, sponsorship opportunities there as well down the road. This presser sponsored by Zoloft. Psychoanalysis. <laughs> <laughs> do you think? What do you think on it? Uh, what do you? Uh, you're you're uh, you like to read between the lines as well, don't you, J Dog? Uh, yeah, I, I sort of sit there and try and do my best impression. Did you see it? Have you seen it? Have you seen what I was talking about? Nah, well, you can't fucking funny. say anything. Oh, hey, all right, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> go, on, go on, go on. Oh, I have nothing to say. Okay, sweet, <laughs> sweet. I was just going to say, uh, pharmaceutical brands, get in touch. Uh, there is a space here for you. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 there's, and there's coaches to be medicated, clearly. Oh, yeah. Taught no. his efforts on, on Friday night. Oh, mate, can you understand? I just say, like, I've been in some... Um, They're weird cats. ...depressors myself, like, mm. just wait, with the coach. Mm. And I'm like... But it's just... It's with Wayne. Yeah. And he's the king at it. Like, he, he will never let anything, like, sl- like you know, he's, he's, he's on top of any, everything. But I'm yeah. like, imagine just being in with one of the younger coaches. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like they've never been in that, like, environment before. You haven't been beaten by 60. You haven't been, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, Todd you, killed it last yeah, year. Yeah. And now he's in a whole different predicament. And yeah. you're like, I don't fucking like this. Mm. Where well, do you deflect? Yeah. How do you deflect? Because the year before, he was off like they had a rough year at Cowboys. Mm. And he slowly built them up. They had a good year. Yeah. Now he's like going, fuck. So this, this, I don't this is his third year? I think so, yeah. This yeah, is so his third, third year, right? So, yeah. okay. okay. He's interim at the Warriors in 2020, but the Cowboys was his first permanent job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so like, so he's he's like trying, I thought I was out of the deal with it. Like, and, and this is a different generation, you know. You got your mm. Wayne Bennett and Craig Bellum. He's a whole different generation. You got this, like, he's, mm. he's my generation, mm. Big Rod. You know what I mean? Like, he's only a year older than me. So mm. I'm like, how the fuck would I handle that? I remember um, uh, Daniel Anderson took me into a, a presser. My, I, only, I only got one my rookie year, and um, I think we lost the game. We must have lost the game. Yeah, because I knew him that wouldn't want to do it. And he was like, 
he took me in there because he I think he was filthy at the older boys. It was my mm. yeah, it was my debut year because Ando was still there. He goes, "You're coming in with me, but don't say anything." And I was like, "Oh, because I must have had a, I must have played an alright game." Just don't say anything. Yeah, that it? yeah. He goes, "Don't say." He goes, "Don't worry, they won't ask you anything. Don't say anything." I was like, "Yeah, sweet." So I just sat in a press. And we got we got beaten by South. And uh, I just sat there and they just like grilled Ando back in the year. Because remember the year before, 09? Um, yeah. That's when they went to the grand final. 2010 was my debut year and we were in calculation to make the eight at the back end of the year and we weren't going to yeah. – we eventually didn't make it. Oh, he's had a bit of a run mid-season, didn't mm. he? Yeah. Anyway, we ended up finishing like uh, 11th and then that's where the fucking – the fetish for the depressors started <laughs> while I was sitting there right next to – I was sitting there right next to Ando going <laughs> – Fuck! Looking at looking at the. It's fucking, weird, eh? I said, look at all these fucking weird cats trying to <laughs> just trying to break there. Ando down, yeah. and I'm just sitting there like absorbing the questions. Just going at the time, going, don't fucking ask me yeah. a word. I don't. No one asked me nothing. I just sat there for seven minutes, yeah. didn't say a word. I'm and then we a left. couple of things like with Wayne, just going, and an Origin one, just like. Fuck, these guys are just going <laughs> yeah. at it. Like, they're so pumped. Yeah. Like, you, they don't understand that we've just been through fucking war. Yeah. And we don't give a fuck what you're saying. Yeah. Like, me as a player, just going, I don't give a shit. I actually don't care. If, we, if we had a one by 50 or lost by 50, I just want to go back in the sheds and fucking have a beer. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait to get the fuck out. People of there. can't see the journos too. Because, no. like, they're asking questions. They might yeah, ask a question. And they're, and they're That's be- so mad sarcastic. And then they go, yeah. I'd love for that for them just to cut it in the bottom of the corner and you got blokes like Brett <laughs> Reed and shit standing up with Yeah, bike. like asking this big long fucking Lost by fifty. How did you how did you find that today? Geez, yeah. you lost a rack early or Felt something. Felt amazing, like. mate. Awesome. Great. All right. Um let's get into the other topics. No dramas. Jammer reckons that they should break out the stretcher for blokes who milk injuries and tackles. So is this big jam? Yeah. <laughs> yeah Have you seen Ray. this one yet? This no, is grouse. Oh. It's got some good takes. Yeah. So basically anybody who is diving or milking for a penalty, he reckons they should break out a stretcher, embarrass Embarrass them. the fuck out of a moment. And then the old school stretcher yeah, too. Yeah, real old school type shit. Like, I love jammer. Yeah. Love Jammer. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, so do, you, do you reckon he's carrying on a bit or is this the way we get No, ready? no, no. Who? Jammer's not carrying Jam. on. No, I think I think he's taken it a bit too far with the stretcher and the fucking ambulance because that's just Jammer and he's, <laughs> he's, doing, he's doing that on purpose. I but I don't, I don't hate the idea of punishment for players that are potentially going to lay down. So I'll give you an example, right? So he's mm. – this come up because he was filthy um, both on both sides, both teams in the, in the Raiders versus Broncos game. Um, Alec Whitehead took a while to get up before eventually Ezra Mam got done for that uh, head eye tackle on him, which was fucking across the chest, and Alec Whitehead sort of dipped. And then you even it was across if, the chest. What do you reckon? Do you reckon it was high? Oh, fucking sh- shoulder to the head. Yeah, but like Alec Whitehead sort of tripped, Dip. fell. But does then, it matter? Like we were talking about. No, this, it doesn't. But we were talking about this, this before. Positional. Do you know what I mean? Positional, what we call it? Like, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, okay, I get you with going with I that. I think it is because like Elliot White had six foot three or four. Ezra Man's tiny. If that was the opposite, fucking he'd be sent off. 100%. Fully agree with you on that as well. Yeah. Um, but my point is with it, it wasn't initially a penalty until no, just waiting, until Elliot, waiting, until, what, waiting, until, until waiting, Smelly waited. 10, 10 and seconds. then Ren did it on the other side, Adam Reynolds. So he got hit by Hudson Young, maybe the set, maybe a couple of sets before when he took the intercept and Huddy Young fucking hit him mm. up around the chops. It was a penalty. Yeah. But, and Ren was waiting and waiting and it didn't, nothing uh, eventuated, right? So my thing is, right, if... A big way of deterring what happened again, this is what we're talking about with the hip drop last week yeah. and the crusher tackles from a couple of years ago. How they stopped the crusher tackle is because they started taking players off with the HIA for yeah. like head knocks and crusher tackles, right? So it stopped players from fucking doing that, grabbing their neck a little bit more than often and uh, or laying down when they sort of get hit around the chops because then they – players know it's fucking 15 minutes. You could be getting HIA, you know? Um, I don't mind the idea of a five or ten minute – so just say if you get yeah if you get hit around the chops or you 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 say something like because it's very hard to do it for the legs, but if someone gets done for holding their ankle for a perceived hip drop tackle that then goes up to the bunker and then they go oh yeah okay that's a penalty like so it's missed right so ri- originally it's missed and nothing said and he's like get up get up or he doesn't get up and then the bunker comes in and goes oh actually I seen a hip drop it's around the ankles. 
Um, it's, and then he goes, penalty. That guy's got to go off for 10 yeah, minutes. And that's like 50 metres back that three minutes before. Yeah. They've done that. They've done that. No, just on a, a on a press. No, on I'm a, saying a, they've done that. But yes, they've they done have. That. Yeah, it's yeah. terrible. No, but I'm, t- I'm talking about the guys that, that are now. This is the only way you're going to get rid of um, people – Grabbing their faking. ankles for hip fake and hip drop tackles is if you do if you if you lay down for any sort of tackle and then it eventually comes back from the bunker that you um, get the penalty because of the incident I reckon you've got to go off for ten minutes to be assessed no matter what HII or whatever fifteen minutes is too too much because it it, it, it could even just for a hit drop you reckon they could just well, have to go off because the players are just going to keep doing it mate mm. like this is why it's hip, hard it's hard hip like, drop it's, tackles and it's hard, and it's hard to like question the a player's integrity exactly as well. right so why don't you, exactly what Jam is saying he's going the extreme embarrass them yeah, I'm exactly, saying like, if you want to grab something off. if something's sore and then it creates a penalty for your team then you should go off even if it's for five minutes because you know what it is right players are they know how important like uh, uh, Ren for example from the weekend Adam Reynolds five minutes when you're down by ten he doesn't want to go off for five minutes no even if it's to be checked like even though even if it is a a, a small moment in the game he'll go I'm probably not going to fucking sit here and wait for a penalty if I get five minutes it's a crucial part of the game we're down by 10 we're trying to get back into the game so I think there's some merit into I think there's some merit there, there is there is coming there is. off I think I think so as well if it's over the five minutes minimum yep five, or, or maximum you know what I mean like yeah. just say if you, if you do that but a little like, five minute this is all the, injury the product this is all the product of the game just speeding up so fucking quick yeah that I you agree are, you are looking for a one minute rest a fucking one minute rest gone to the days where you're like hey kick it out so we can walk to the scrum and you get your one and a half minute rest and you get to the scrum and then you're fucking nearly fully recovered they are looking for something like like because the game is just relentless in the middle and you see most of these guys if, and they're, they're not they're not getting told to do it they're not getting told to lay down if anything's a hip drop or anything like that it's just fucking you're that fucked out there, it seems, that like if you see that it's a, some sort of chance where you can get a penalty coming out of yardage when it's 8 6, you're going to take it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. what the game's come to, and yeah. it sucks. It does suck because we want to see these guys compete, compete, compete. Yeah. But you're looking for this little edge. If you can get it, you can get it. This little edge. And if you're coming out of just say you're on the back foot the whole time, you're playing against Penrith, they're just fucking bashing you into submission. And then you come out on the third or fourth tackle and you're on your 40 meter line and you see it's, you know, a little bit of a, uh, it could be a little bit of a hip drop. Your, your legs sore a little bit. You're like, oh, fuck, I might, I might lay down. Take the penalty. I'm going to try, right. I'm going to try minutes. and get the penalty. Now, you're five playing, minutes. you're playing to the rules. Yeah, that's all you're doing. You, the players are playing to the rules, and it and it sucks, but they're just using the rules, to, and that's what players do. That's we played the game before. Yeah, 100%. if you give us a rule, we're going to find some fucking grey area in it, yep. and we're going to exploit it. Hundred percent. We're going to exploit it until the game catches up and figures catches, out a way to stop catches it. on our catch, catches up to our bullshit, and then they start penalising it like they did with the HIAs. But it's just like this is happening right now. Mm. The hate, the 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 hits to the head, and. The, the, hip drop, the hip drops, it's it's happening too much now. It's slowing the game down in these cru- crucial moments when you've got these guys under the pump. They're just about to break. Bang. Could look suspicious on that tackle. They're going to lay down. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and, you don't, and you're not and, – and to all the viewers out there and the fans, it's not fucking coached. No, it's not. It is not Because you know coached. why, Mace? It's because it's because what you said, It's because right? of what I'm saying. You are so fucking fatigued all fatigue and you are injuries. looking – for something to get you out of yardage so yeah. you're on an attacking kick and then you're in their half and you could change the whole game. Yeah, but you That's know, it. so I want to explain this as well for people that watch, you know, this. everyone's like, oh, the hip drop tackle's been creeping into the game. It's always been in the game. Yeah. Those tackles happen through fatigue when your ass is hanging out and you lose your feet. Mm. So... People are like, oh, do they practice uh, hip drop tackles at training? No, because no. you never you never train or you never get to a point at training where you're that fucking fatigued no. that your ass is hanging out and you make a soft option. And it, essentially, that's what it is, right? I've done it, uh, plenty of them. If you go back and watch my fucking just tackles from over years, I had a lot of times where I'm like, you know, you get good contact or someone, you come in for third man in, but your ass is hanging out and you sort of just sort of drop in and around the legs. It's been happening forever. It's fucking pissing me off because 99% of the times, I don't think they're no, worthy they're not, of they're penalties. Not on purpose. And like you guys, we've said it before. Or on like purpose. Car- Carrigan and all these sort of guys, yep. Liam Knight, one. They looked. They look fucking pretty cheap. Yeah. They look pretty cheap, and it looked and it looked like it was 
Yeah, you could avoid that. Some of these ones that I'm seeing, I'm like, you know, like when you showed me last week the Finucane one, and I'm just like, oh, fucking hell, that's just yeah, a tap. New Cora one that's was a worse. That's, that's a tap. That's just a yeah. new, I think it was a New Cora one. New Cora one, one that's yeah. That's just a fucking tackle. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and. And you, you, I coming, don't even think coming, Preston's was that yeah, bad, but bro. You, yeah, Pre- Preston's one was fucking stupid. Not that's saying that's not why saying because he's my boy. And oh, why agree? That was like that, <clears throat> and you know we just lost Fox and we get Preston off for ten. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like you can't have that those two things and you think you're going to beat South Sydney. You know what I mean? Not saying that it costs us a game or anything like, but it was a fucking yeah, yeah. To help 12, 12 people against thirteen, they ended up scoring fucking two or three tries. <clears throat> it was fucked. Um, but little things like the the hip drop and that, like when you're going sideways and tackling that way, and then He's still powering and you've just got an angle on him. Mm. You can't fucking help that. No. It's been up for ages. Yeah. What I'm against, we said it last week before, is when they're in the middle of the ruck, Tamalolo's going through and you can't hit him front on. Yeah. So you go to the side and then you drop and you lose your legs. Yeah. Get off. Yep. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm totally against that because it's just, you can't tackle him. So you just fucking get out of the way. If you can't, you can't hip drop on that kid. You know what I mean? Like you, if you can't, if you can't, if you can't make, can't make the tackle front on, fucking get out of the way. Don't fucking hang on. Get to the side, hip drop, and then, you know, oh my god, I didn't mean it. Well, what did you mean? You lost your legs and you dropped on his fucking hips on mm. the back of his legs. You know, like Ockenball got done for that. It's the first time he's like, Ockenball's a winger. Yeah, Ockenball you know I mean? one wasn't and he, that and much he, in he didn't it even either. Know, it wasn't that much in it, but like yeah. that's exactly what he did. He's like, oh fuck, I didn't, he didn't even realize he did yeah. it. Well, no, I don't think that because they're not reacting to the fact that they think it's. I the players aren't going, oh shit, I'm fucking worried sick about this guy's mm. um, legs because they know that it's not even doing that much damage. Mm. They're, they're going, oh fuck, I've. This is a penalty. They know it's going to be a penalty because they've sort of fell in position now where it's like they've got themselves in that position and they're just going, fuck. It does oh. damage when you're 120 kilos. If you do it properly, yeah. The, kids 80 kilos. the ones we're talking about, I've yeah. got no time for it, but 99% of them are fucking been way but off. I don't know, yeah, I'm not sure how we're going to fix it. Maybe the stretch is a little bit extreme, Gemma. Five minutes? But I'm with you with the stretcher. A little five Just minutes. to embarrass him and say, yeah. get the fuck off. If you're that bad, stretch him off. Yeah. <laughs> and I bet he gets up and runs. Halves only. <laughs> Do it to halves. Halves go I off, bet he, I bet he gets up and sprints into position, get that fucking stretcher away from me. But, um, you know, there's got, there's, got a way, there's got to be a way that we can get around it. And this is why um, we, we're not on the boards for NRL or anything like that. This is why they get paid the big bucks to figure this shit out. Figure it out. Because it is sort of ruining the game when it's, as I said, like, guys, like, you know, when, when it comes to, like, ex, you know, like uh, semifinals, all that kind of stuff, mm. it's a fucking game. That's what it it's a That's tactic. What it it's a tactic. You've got to try and... You try, Wait, you I'll, I'll give you an example. Players, I'll give you an example, right? Trying, it's fatigue. Sorry, fatigue is a part of the game, and and it's a mental part of the game, and it's a big part of the game right now. No, you and they keep making mistakes while they're under fatigue because you want that team to make mistakes under fatigue because all you do is train your ass off in preseason, so you're mentally fucking stronger, bigger, faster, stronger, fitter than that other team, mm. and we'll break them in the fucking semifinals, and that's your mentality all preseason. So don't try and think. That, that doesn't happen as soon as you get to the semifinals and Penrith are going, we're fucking better and we're stronger, we're fitter, we're doing everything we can, we'll break the fuck out of Parramatta, we'll do everything, we'll mentally break them down and then you see something like that. Mm. You're going down for a fucking hip drop. That's what we don't want. We don't want to see that and for that to cost the game yep. in a big, big moment. That's why I always look at the worst case scenario. Yep, I'm with you. Next one. All right, scenario. You are the Penrith Panthers, and you can only sign one of Jerome Luai and Dylan Edwards. Who do you Ooh. sign, and why? So God damn, th- this year, question. them two are Did coming you just off come up with that in November what? one. No, yeah. it's been talked about. No, oh. Oh, he's trying to claim it. Yeah, you were going to claim that. Sorry, Shamus. Um, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no Danny Widelaw, I am. Are you Danny Widelaw? Yeah, I'm the exclusive. <laughs> I love exclusive. Yeah. He listens to the show. You know, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> um. As of November 1, those two become free agents. So there's every chance that one or the other or both, if they both take severe unders, could re-sign by then. But look, there's a chance that one of them will leave and that chance is fairly likely. So once again, my question. Hypothetical, Mace. We did this with Paddy Carrigan and Payne Haas the other week. I'm going to ask you this time first. If you have to pick only one, because I think there's there's a world in which they both stay, but if you have to pick only one, who are you going and why? And then I'll have mine after you. Wow, that's a fucking hard one. That is a hard one. I've been um, 
All I've all I've heard all week was is Dylan Edwards worth a million dollars and all that kind of stuff. I haven't I haven't heard the change between is it Luai or Dylan well, it Edwards. might not necessarily even happen. They might take less and might both stay there. But but salary cap to salary, salary cap. cap salary cap comes and in. You got to get, you can only afford one. I'm taking uh, I'm taking Luai. Why? Because mm. I just I just think that uh, Dylan Edwards' position can be handled. Mm. Okay. By someone else, they they like. I think Taruva could pl- maybe play fullback. You know, I think they've they've got a plethora of players coming through that grade, coming through that system that could actually fit in there. You know, mm-hmm. like, he, like Dylan Edwards is not a generational player. You know what yeah. I mean? He's a hard worker. He works his ass off, and he's been in a great system. He does everything right. A couple of years ago, they were going to flick him because. He wasn't, he wasn't doing all those little things. He was bad under the high ball. He was doing some things. He went back to the lab, come back as one of the most improved players in the comp. 100%. He's playing with Penrith, which is the best team in the world at the moment, rugby league, and he's absolutely killing it. Luai, I just think you, it's hard to come across really classy, world-class halves. Mm. I think he's proved that in the last three or four years. He's been three grand finals. He's played Origin. He's played at the top level. He's got he's got guys like Kiri and all these other blokes and White and out of their positions, so he's starting there. And I just think what he brings to that team off the field and on the field is mm, probably more important, more yep. important than what Dylan Edwards brings. I think that they could make do with without – Without Dylan Edwards, if you're going to if, you, if you're going to take him up against each other, I think yep. Dylan, Dylan Edwards is, is is amazing. But if you you know gun to head, I'm picking Luai, and I just right. think his combinations with with um with the seven, with the six, the, yep. the, and that you know the Tottos, all those sort of thing, the brotherhood that they built there, I just think he's more important to that to that system. Yeah, well, uh, for all those reasons, and it, it, I'm just going to echo what you said. I love, you know it go, it comes back to because Jerome Luai is there like. Um, um, what's the word like? Um, the spiritual leader. He's their vocal leader. Like he's their, mm. you know, he says he's their uh, chief energy officer, the CEO. Yeah. Like he brings the vibes. Him and him and Bizzer, yeah. and, and you know, even more so with Critter moving on. Great point. Love Dylan Edwards. I think I might have lent closer towards Dylan Edwards with the fucking grand final in mind yeah. how well he played last year um, had a couple of conversations with Nath last year about his importance to the team and him being an underrated player I reckon he's gone from the point where no, he's no longer underrated I don't think there's anyone no. that watches the game thinks that Dylan Edwards is underrated anymore he's essentially who would people think he is he's a gun um, he's he's a he's a and this is this is the thing, and it's like not not even having a go at him. But he's as good as he is for for Penrith, and he's been playing. I still don't have him in the in, in the top five sort of players in his position. Where I with Jerome, I do. I got yeah. Jerome as a top three, good. top four, uh, five eight. I think there's a great point was the Taruva um, point where um, seeing him play in the World Cup can see him play fullback where. Yeah. I think filling in that role with Jerome is. Both both will be hard to replace in a way, but the fact that Jerome plays six for not only his club, but played for his state the last couple of years and also represented Samoa, the fact that he's able to play as a role player, essentially like a role player, both of them do really in a way yeah. because Nathan and Isaiah run the show, but they're able to sit back and be third, fourth fiddle, but also... Front of mind, again, based off the World Cup, is I haven't seen Dylan Edwards be the dude for another team outside of Penrith or New, New South Wales because he hasn't played rep footy, obviously. Whereas with Jerome, I've seen him be that guy for some while. Yeah. Like he was, he was that dude, got him all the way to the World Cup. It was the one last little question mark that I had on him. So for me, I'm sticking with Jerome as well. You put Dylan Edwards in a West Tigers system in the last five years. You think we're having this but he, conversation? But even, even Jerome though, like... Yeah. yeah, I'm not. I'm just saying, like, you can see the talent with Jerome. Yeah, yeah. But you just put him in a West Tigers system. Even just say the Bulldogs, just say for the last five years. Mm. Put him in that system. You know, like, you're not, you're not playing with the best forward packs. You're not playing with the best halves. You're not playing with anything like that that make you look good. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, I think Dylan Edwards is a class player. He's the most improved player I've seen in the last five years. He is. Yep. He's, he's, he has worked on his game. Luai is just a talent. He's always been a talent. He's never been a per, he's never been a work in progress, has he? 
No, he's been. He's, he's never. Been, he's always been that no, dude. He's been that it's for just, two, three he's years. He's been now. that dude yeah. ever since he hit the scene. Yeah. Where Dylan Edwards is a work in progress. Mm. He worked his ass off. You know what I mean? So you always late bloomer. I, he's a late, yeah, exactly. So we and and I'm like, I I, lo- I love the I love him. I think he's working. Go go get your money. I hope they pay him a million dollars and everything like that. But he's he reminds me of a Luke Patton. Mm. He reminds me of Luke That's Patton. That's a good comp. He reminds me of Luke Patton. Luke Patton. He was steady Luke, as fuck, Luke, Luke Patton. Patton. The, general the general was one of the best fullbacks to play the game in an era of fucking gun fullbacks. Yeah. And this era of fullbacks now is fucking- That's a great it's, comp. It's, and yous were stacked too, so we it's a good stacked. comparison. Exactly. So I understand great full pack, great team, yeah. fullback at the back, catching all the balls, doing all the little things. Yeah. And just like, just, and ge- General could have easily played for New South Wales or Australia. Mm. Mm. Easily. So mm. could Dylan Edwards. Yes. But he never got, he never got those uh, representatives. He never got those representative accolades because of the fact that you had the Minicellos, you had all these other guys in front of him. And, you know, but General, none of it, like guys, you hear that you hear that the the players echoing these sentiments like he's a fucking the glue to the team he's a fucking high energy that's what we say about general yeah it's yeah. exactly the that's same thing that's what Nate thing. says about oh, Edwards. He, he probably won't play a representative game but he's he's a fucking he's he's a fittest guy in the club he's a fucking energy yeah. he's all this kind of stuff blah 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 that's Luke Patton yeah that's what general was yeah he was all that 200 300 gamer you know what i mean like just just missed out because of the fucking fullbacks that were around in that era mm. look at the fullbacks that are around in this era yeah you know played in a great side general did dylan edwards is in the same sort of class yeah. it's, it reminds me of that yeah and, and general was a prodigy from day mm. dot yeah okay he yeah, was, yeah, I he remember. Was, he was, he was that at Illawarra. dude. Ninety nine grand final Dragons? already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So George Illawarra. So he Dragons? was he was that dude. Yeah. But just like they, he missed the he missed the boat when they picked Hodgson for fullback. They had like a couple other blokes. They yeah. just didn't go with him when he should have played New South Wales. And then yeah. Minicello come in and just like fucking yeah, went see you later. Over. Yeah, yeah, good one. Who would you go just quickly, DJ Tugdown? In terms of who if you had to pick one, two of them. Uh, yeah, I'd probably go with you guys and go Jerome. I think Dylan's an effort player, and they've got a lot of good young fullbacks coming through. So I'm not saying that Dylan Edwards is easily replaced because he's won two premierships. No, this is gun to the head sort of shit. Yeah, oh, that's exactly right. But uh, just before we finish, is there a world where they keep them both? Where yes. They're both, where they're both paid, you know, sort of the bare minimum of what the NRL sets as their base value. And, you know, they both take unders to mm. the spine. It would be interesting. I think uh, Jerome would definitely warrant more on the market. He's a mil plus player. Yeah, you think Jerome will get a mil? Yeah. I think he'd be close to in this year. in this in this climate. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he's eight anywhere. The floor's yeah. eight. Floor's eight hundred. He's right? coming in minimum. His floor's nine, eight. I reckon if you're nine. Manager, yeah, yeah, easily. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. With the cap, what's, what's the cap going to be in the next couple of years? Twelve? Oh yeah, true. The cap goes up as well. At the moment, Mate, he's yeah, he's. That's right. Let's get into the previews. All right, let's go for it. Just a quick note before we get into the preview that odds are accurate as of 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday, the 12th of April. <laughs> Shout out to our friends at the Tab for all of these odds. Thursday night, round six, the Dolphins will host South at Suncorp. Our friends at the Tab have South in at $1.27. Dolphins out at $3.80. Line is at 11 and a half. Now, just quickly, boys, if you have a look at the ladder, and I know we obviously don't pay attention to it still being this early in the season, but the Dolphins are fourth and South are tenth. I think, you know, <laughs> looking at these two squads on paper, you probably think that it was the other way around, wouldn't you? Uh, with regards to the market, nah. Look, the market wouldn't be the other way around. Who's going to be favourites? I think they're I still just getting mean, the sorry, dis- Just quickly, I mean ladder position. Oh, the ladder position. Yeah, no, yes. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, for sure it would have been. Um, a, lot, a lot of us I going to season. I so I don't know. <laughs> South's, um, <laughs> yeah, South have had a, a fairly rough uh, – There, I think probably South and Parramatta have had a tougher draw, but let's let's go to the two games. Dolphins were impressive against the Cowboys, Mace. Um, yeah, they were. And South were obviously really good against you guys when they broke away in a couple of crucial moments. Um, the tab, the OG is $3.80. Pardon Pardon me. <coughs> 11 and a half start mace they're still not giving the fucking dolphins the nah. respect man i wonder how many times i'm, I'm, I'm sh- I'll, I'll ask our friends at the tab i'll find out dolphins with all the wins that they've had they must be hitting the start and even in the games that they've lost they would be close to covering most games let me think oh, so wh- sure. who are the two losses that they had broncos broncos that would that would that was within it wasn't it 
They didn't get blown out. And no, they didn't. And the other one was... A couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? No, they got pumped by the Dragons. Pumped by the Dragons. Yeah, okay. All right, so... Yeah, Yeah, I I can understand. I can understand why Souths are ahead because they haven't reached their potential nowhere near it. And And it's starting to get truth back. And last week, they put 50 on us. So they looked looked all right. Dry arrows back this week. Dry arrow back. You got another week with... I think Totola might be out. You got got AJ back. Campbell Graham, they keep talking about... Origin wingers. Mm. Did he first come into the game as, as a, a winger. winger? Yeah, well, he played right wing for the uh, Australian team too in the World Cup. They seem to like forget his name. Mm. I know that Fox. I mean, Fox. I would have hoped hope that he would have been in that Origin team, but you know, a um, bit of an injury to him. He's not. He's probably going to miss the Origin series. They're just sort of skimming past Campbell Graham. What are you thinking? He's always been there or thereabouts. I feel like he's been in the extended squad for a couple. Of course, of yeah, years. of course. I'm just saying, but he is the current Australian winger. Yeah, he'd be. He'd be. So uh, we're not even look. They haven't even been looking at him for Origin, and he's been carving up. I reckon Freddie, because yeah, Fre- Freddie had him in a couple of years ago. I dare say, with all the form, that he'll be. And Toops, if I mean, not, I understand Toops because he's got experience and everything like that. I would, I would go, I would go with Toops. But Campbell Graham is a big body. The, t- the carries that he has to take out of yardage are fucking brutal. Yeah, he always takes the shit and carries. And so does Toops. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a win-win situation. But like, you can't just skim past that kid. He's an he's an animal. Um, Latrell was back to his. You know, he, he was good. He was just like... He was Supported on up the middle, Cody getting Walker, involved. Cody Walker was good. Ilias. Like Jai, Jai Arrow's their biggest one coming back. Kalama Matangi, Jacob Host played well. They all they all played pretty good football. Cam Murray. Um, their bench is pretty solid. You know the beauty of uh, South is that their left edge has been so strong for the last couple of years, but mm. they've been doing all their best work on the right edge this yeah. year. Like all the big games where they've played well and they've won but that's well. Up, that's up to... Even um, the Cronulla game, right? To start yeah. of the season, they went right Ilias on the right edge. Probably. The game against the Roosters, Colin and Tungy and uh, um, the winger scored as well. They both... Yeah. No, sorry, they went to uh, AJ on the left. It's all, but it's all on uh, they started. They started right, yeah. He's been good without being like... His name hasn't been getting tossed up too much, but he's setting up some shape nicely there for him. That's probably his best game in the last month. You know who, I've, you know who I've been impressed by? Um, another guy... I think everyone in the Dolphins has been impressive, but she, uh, fucking love seeing Jermaine Asako play well. You know, Jeez, he scored three... Yes, I think he scored amazing. two or three on the weekend against the Cowboys as well. That try that he jumped over Brendan Alley, yeah, and and plucked it down and put it all down in one in one uh, movement. Uh, I think he was a guy that was. He's always had left, that talent. He's left, always had that yes, talent. he always had the talent. He got fucked around in different positions at the Broncos. I think he's just got a lockdown now being an NRL winger and not worrying about trying to play fullback, not trying to worry about playing centers because he's doing a fucking great job on that he right was, side. He was the product for, uh, the of the Dolphins. Broncos having so much talent and – Not knowing where to put them. And, yeah, but not delivering. Yeah. They, they weren't making the eight, and the, you know what I mean? Like, And then last year when they did go good – you know, he already signed with the Dolphins, so they went, you know what, fuck it, go. So he went to the Titans. He's, you know, he, he, he needs stability and he's got it at the Dolphins now. And he's, he's, he's always been a talent. I want to see some more out of Cody Nicarima. He needs a big game. Mm. Yeah, you know, I think the forward pack's pretty even. Ray Stone's in there just to make 70 tackles and he fucking hits hard. Tom Gilbert has been... Unreal. Super aggressive. Unreal. Like, not, he's not fucking caring about anyone yeah zero respect for anyone and himself yeah he he's just goes, throwing his fucking body fucking around everywhere you, he's the fucking he's the donsky t- fucking yeah 2.0. he is bro he's got that look in his eyes it's like he's the donsky hell, i think he wants to fight me or just tear my head off so um lemuelu yep solid outstanding Yep. I thought Felice got back this week too. Was a No, nah, he's got another week. He's still got another week. Fuck that's bullshit. Bullshit Oh, uh, did you see the Jared Wallace one? So Jared Wallace, right? Yeah, what happened to him? He had a HIA come off. They gave him category one. I heard Gus talking about this live on air. They ruled him out of the game, category one. He passed the test. Oh wow. But because he had already been given category one so from the bunker. He's now going to miss this game yeah, as well. 11 games. I mean, 11, 11 days. 11 that's, days. That's shit. Get your Medicare card out, PBL. Pay these doctors from somewhere. No way we can have them on. Yeah. Are they, are they still not at the game? The independent doctor, the chat around right. it, at is the he bunker. At the game? Is he yeah. at the game or is, he, got, in a, is he in a glass tower? I've got an NRL insider. Put it this right, way, right, mate. Right. In, you know, 
there. levels. We're levels to this shit, right, AG? You, you know, you're the king. You're getting right in there, Al. I got, a, I got a guy on the inside. So basically, he told me that with the the bunker and the reason they do it through the bunker, they have obviously the doctors on the sideline, but the bunker, the cameras that they have. This is the the biggest thing that I took out of it. The cameras that they have available in the bunker. The, you don't see all of them on Channel 9 and Fox, basically. Yep. So there are other cameras in and around that. So you know how obviously there's there's a camera focusing in on the tackle. You might see it and go, oh. And then the play goes on. You go like, oh, he looked like fucking uh, – Jared Wallace looks like he's doing all sorts there, but it goes away. They've got all the other cameras, eight cameras. So their focus then goes in for the independent docker, doc, doctor that's in the bunker. He just, not, he just starts hitting all the cameras. So he's just like tap. Tap, tap. He's sitting there and watching the cameras to wherever that play is going. Obviously, they've they've got someone else. They've got, I think they've got a couple of current players or ex players that are in there as well with a doctor to give them. So he might. So an ex player might go, "Hey, just have a look at Jared Walsh there." And then the doctor looks, and with all the cameras that they have available through Fox and Channel Nine that aren't live coverage, then they eventually then pick up players that's why they don't do it there on the sidelines and also another thing um, that was mentioned as well and this is what I asked him I said are they afraid of in a big moment in a big game a doctor being on the sideline and just imagine if it's like a finals game origin something big and then the trainers or coaching staff coming over the doctor going he's sweet like or trying to tell him that he's sweet right you reckon they are well no that why I asked that and he said no that like emotion that comes into it with being in the sideline in and around him shouldn't factor in. No. But that's human it's human nature, they right? They should be not even being they should not even be near that independent doctor. Mm. Mm. That's his job. Be well see, there, that's why that's another reason he likes to be they like him in the bunker and that's why they do it anyway. They fucking can't do that. Get him out of the bunker and get him <laughs> on the sideline. Yeah. That's right, it. That's the reason anyway. So no, that's a good that's a good insight. Yeah. Fucking great insight. And our insiders for that skip. <laughs> Anyway. All right. Anyway, Campbell Graham on fire. Fucking late hat trick against you, boys. I'm going him again. Anytime jam. Great for weight. And I'll take Seahawks head to head, but I don't mind the 11 and a half at the start. And it's been, you get $1.95 about that too. So give me that. Let's roll on the next one. Yeah. I'm with Souths. You want Souths for the win? Yeah. Friday, 6 o'clock, Cronulla Ooh. Roosters. Uh, we have the Chooks in at favourite to the dollar seven. Sharks are 11th. Wow. Cronulla, right. $2.10. Line is at two and a half. Is this one going to be close or could one team blow out? No, nah, I think this will be close. Roosters- Tradi- traditionally, this is a fucking hard game. Didn't Roosters Doesn't blow them out last year, even though they're the grouse, at Cronulla? Did they? I think they did. But it's usually it was the one game that Cronulla played poor It's usually one of the hardest. You're wearing that, that, those two teams hate each other. Hmm. Um, look at the ins for uh, for the Sharks. Connor Tracy, Jaden Burrell, Hirote, Kafusi, Hazelton, oh, yeah. Tapua, yep. Wade Graham. Plenty of yell ins. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but no Toby. <laughs> you lodge Tedesco. That's all that matters. Yeah, really like when you look at else. Yeah, when you when you look at the list, yeah, it does because a lot of those guys are the um they're uh, guys that were interchanged. So the mm. only ones that matter there are Wade Graham and Oregon Gafusi for yeah. me. Connor Tracy's a, a very flexible player to have in and around that squad as well. Great player. Um, Teddy, Teddy's obviously Teddy and Lodge for the Roosters. Um, Roosters. Who did the Roosters play again? They got dusted by Melbourne. Yeah. Um, Rads. <laughs> let's talk about Rads, Mace. Rads in that tackle. He's. I love him to death, Radley. Mm. But if you're a Robbo, you're a, you're actually you're a player that played close to pushing the limit yourself, mm. Mace. What sort of conversations are uh, the Roosters or Radley having with himself well, he now? Knew, he, knew, he knew it. Yeah, I think he, he did the he, he did the Triple M breakfast or something like that, and he's like, you know, he he, he said it himself, like he cost the team mm. with that hit. He just needs to get that shit out of his game. You know, like it's uh, that's and that's the only downfall on his game is you know little little things like that when he where he can handle that moment he should be able to handle that moment he's a senior player he's a leader in that team and I'm not fucking blaming him for losing that game. Well, he blamed himself. I'm, know, I'm happy to blame that, him. I'm, and that's I know, I know. But I'm like, I'm, I'm like, you know, it was 10 minutes. The Roosters are good enough defensively to fucking they hold, should do. To hold Melbourne out. Every but, team should do. But, but this, this is consistent and, with Rads. In this, yeah, in this day and age. You're playing against red hot Melbourne side, and yep. they'll fucking put points on you. Yeah. Um, you know, like I, yeah, he, he's just got that little bit of a, a brain explosion mm. in his game, 
where he can do some dumb shit like it's not from a bad place. It's not like it's vindictive. Well, it it's wasn't even anything. it wasn't even vicious it was to hit. Nothing. You know the, what I mean? The vicious it was, just, it was just a brain explosion. It's like he didn't even. He, you know what I mean? He just sort of come up and just went. Nah. It was dumb. He's like, oh fuck it, I'll just hit yeah. him anyway. Is it? Yeah. Therefore, if it is a brain explosion, is it easy to get out of his game? It is. That's easy to get out of his game. Okay. Easy. Like he's not. He's not like that. He's more of a fucking a contact shoulder to the head. Mm. Fucking like he'll get you. Like he'll get you in a solid hit. He ain't a cheap player. Yeah. It's not that. He, yeah, that wasn't that's a true. Cheap shot. He's that's not true. like that. Victor Radley's a fucking aggressive kid who will get you like, and you're like, shit. What you know, like a. It's going to be like put. He's going to put someone on his back pretty hard, shoulder to the head, something that's really brutal. That is not part of his game, and that's why he's probably filthy at himself more than anyone because he's like, "Fuck, that's not usually the way I play." You know what I mean? So, all massive respect for him. Accountability's fucking huge in my book, and he come in. He, he fronted. He was on Front Street straight away. He said, "Look, he blames himself." And you can't, you, and you can't, you can't say that to a bloke who's the, he's the leader of that team. He he leads the energy. He hits everything. He leads by example. And you know when you, when a player like that's coming out, and you're just like, what do you do? You just got to, you know, I, I feel sorry for a couple of blokes in um, Cronulla. He's going to come after him this week. Mm. Cronulla's off a bite. Does that change anything for you guys? No, not really. Uh, not not in a game like this. Cronulla versus Roosters. They're both going to be pumped up regardless. The Roosters are going to be pumped up because they lost against Melbourne in a game that they started well in and then sort of just lost control. And then again, it was a bit mm. like the Rabbitohs from the week before where I thought Melbourne were dominant. Even though the scoreline wasn't crazy big, I thought it was mad dominant. I could uh, After about the 50th or 60th minute, I didn't see Roosters coming back into it. They didn't have any answers. But obviously, they get Teddy back coming back this week. Um, so I'm going to head towards the Roosters. I think the Roosters will bounce back. I haven't been impressed by the Sharks at all. They had the one good no. showing against the Dragons. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, they got beaten by the Warriors the week before the bye. So I haven't seen enough from Cronulla. Cronulla and Cowboys are in the same boat for me this year. They're almost in that. I'm, I'm not going to – I'm not – just putting them down as the team as last year until I start seeing some some actions and they get Wade Graham back will be big because they needed to fix up that left edge that's been leaking so therefore my only time try scorer Egan Butcher I'm going to get it right hey, edge that'd, right, be, a bit of that'd be right yeah that is value he's paying 425 you know if, if Cam Munster doesn't play against the Roosters the Roosters win that dude is on another level He's on Dally M sort of level. Yeah. He's on that. He doesn't really get many points, bro. You'd be surprised how many times he Did he, he not get all the points on the weekend? He got it on the Surely weekend. Surely he did. He I, got it on mean, the I weekend. don't follow him, but like... Yeah. No, nah, he got it on the weekend, but you'd be surprised how many times he... In games where you go back and watch, and like... Because he's never really there. So, mate, how many times in the last couple of years have we said, who's the best game? In the last two or three years, who is the best big game player in your mind? Him. Him, right? Yeah. I can't ever remember seeing him in the top five. Like, yeah. So what's the, the, you know the thing is because there's so many stars down there. Yeah, but you still, I mean? like, it's, I mean, he doesn't I mean, get given still. the maximum points in daily M for some reason when it matters all the time. I think people there's a, like a little, you know, because he's a rat bag and he's that fucking yeah, dirty yeah, rat typical, bag Queenslander yeah, and that typical that they, sort of like that mm. they want to win the fucking daily M. Anyway, they kept every like all. All forwards under 100 metres, apart from Victor Rally, who got 113 metres. And he had Melbourne did. That is massive. Mm. And he had 10 in the bid. So big, big effort from um, Vic Radley. But their back row, Egan Butcher, Nat Butcher, 63 metres, 45 metres. Lindsay Collins, 81 metres. Hargraves, 90 metres. What side is Egan Butcher playing on, right or left? Egan's playing left. Is he? I think. Because um, I want to tack that Gus left is end. back this week. Is yeah, he he's in cup. He's, well, he's playing cup. Up, well, he's back. He's fucking playing. It's yeah. fucking awesome. It's the most he's, stacked cup forward. He's playing with Tupanua. I don't give a fuck how good is it that he is back yeah. playing. Oh, he's league. back. That's awesome. That is fucking so – I'm so happy for him. I messaged him um, during the week going, fuck, I'm so happy for you, mate, just to get back in the, into the fold, healthy, mentally healthy, and just fucking come back. Fuck, it's, it's amazing. Story. Have you got a New South Wales Cup fucking rap for us, do you? Um, took down. Just quickly, the New South Wales Rugby League doesn't have the whole thing, but uh, Gus is back. Lodge. Lodge is playing. Oh, well, he's playing. Lodge is in first grade. Yeah, he's in first grade. Nathan Brown's locking the scrum for the Chooks in, in State Cup, and there's someone else that I'm missing. Somebody will tell us in the comments, but I haven't got the... Uh, Tupanoa. 
Oh yeah, and Satili's back. Holy as well. shit! What are you just, playing? Why don't you just ask me, DJ Tog? I don't know all the shit. Yeah, I just need yeah. a fucking computer. Yeah, I didn't tell you when I when you playing, need that shit. Playing new town. All right, perfect scenario. They come back. I think. Talk to I me. think both butchers push to the bench and two and, hey, and One Gus probably up. nearly misses out on the seventeen. Nah. Tupanua is going to be in there. I reckon both butchers go to the bench spots with Mudders Hutchinson and Matty Lodge and Tupanua and Gus go straight in. Oh, and then there's Connor Watson, but he yeah. did his Achilles. No, 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 no. no, no. Connor Watson's done his Achilles, done. so he's still got a while to go. Poor bastard. Um, yeah, Cronulla. Uh, yeah, for, all the, the for all the Cronulla fans at home, um, I just need to see more. I think Wado will bring a, a shitload. I think Oregon Kafusi missed the game. What did he miss the game for? HIA? Or he could have been Big Tom Hazleton on the bench. This is a big Hazleton's ga- a big boy, man. I think this is a big. This is it's a, it's a big game for that left edge. So I was hoping to get fucking Egan Butcher on the right. Anyway, nope. Who, who was your pick? The Chooks. I'm um, Chooks. Chooks. Beautiful. All right. Second game. Shark. Friday sorry, night. Shark Park too. Ooh, that's, mm. that's, that's a good bet. Mm. Second game. The Sharks. Night. Yeah, they pumped. They pumped him at Cronulla it's last always, year. Always, it's one they, of the hardest games. I've been playing with the Roosters there. Always against Sharks. Friday night. Yuck. Dewey Ball. Battle of Brookie. Oh, mm. You stole my line. Oh, oh no. no. All right, can we Can't cut you come up with sorry, something fucking else? So can we cut well, it? What else do you fucking call it? Can we cut it in with care. make sure he gets his line? No, I don't want it. No, no, he's a fucking sook, this cunt. <laughs> come on, let him have his, his line. line. Battle of Brookie, second game Friday night. Manly That's original. on Melbourne. <laughs> Melbourne favourites according to our friends at the tab at $1.58 away from home Manly $2.40 outsiders line sits at four and a half Manly have been poor mate How yeah, can, can, can I ask you a question Scott go on I know that you were like fucking like trust and like this is this is the team last week did you lose any hope yeah I'm done yeah, yeah I I'm thought that would be one of the games where yeah. like fuck I don't, because they, 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 aren't, they aren't who you think the, they are yeah why well, I had that question against Newcastle yeah. and confirmed yeah. on the weekend because why because the forward pack like on, on paper you're never going to get an opportunity to face a Penrith forward pack like that like they had available and that's respectfully to the boys no, Isaiah Yo's no still in there Moses Leota's still in there fucking Mitch Moses Kenny, Leota God, Mitch God, Kenny man. is yeah, he's a fucking animal bro Mitch Kenny's still not proven for me He's been a great substitute for him. He's won himself yep. a couple of rings. Still not proven. Uh, Matt Eisenhuth, solid. Agree. Uh, Hoskins, solid. Having a really good year. Solid back row. And yeah, I think they'll be disappointed to lose him up at Broncos. And he's doing a really good... I think he's taken the... Totally agree. Ta- totally taken the spot from Ghana. Yep. Um, and the other one, Scotty Sorensen, who's just like a uh, a toiler. He's a Kiwi representative. Yeah, but he's also... But he's fucking good. He's. Like, but if Scotty Sorensen's playing at Cronulla or fucking Tigers, yeah. I don't think he's playing for the Kiwis. And that's... No, no. He's played at a good team and, and he's reaping the rewards of being at a good team on, on, on a um, on a good wicket. So again, no disrespect to those boys, but they're not it's not nowhere near the fucking forward you. pack that they've tossed up. Yeah. And Manly were awful. Like what it like how else can you fucking put it, Mace? Like they were they were beaten at every um, every That's stat it. and facet that there is in the game. Thanks, brother. That they just weren't up to it and uh, Again, same thing. Like we're talking about Dylan Edwards, four tries. Um, the try early on was just like four tries. Yeah, they were, they were pretty poor. They were it poor. was average. It was average. Yeah. Very, so very and poor. then on, and then and then you look at Melbourne. Bang, just dusted the Roosters. Bang, just dusted Rabbitohs, who we both think are going to be there at the end of the year. And then you know I sort of put a line through Melbourne uh, a couple of weeks ago. Weird. Ever since I did that, they've just I, I was especially after the Dogs game. Yeah. I was like, yeah, they're not. But they had mm. they had a fair few players out. Yeah, Munster, no Munster. Um, Fuck, he's, yeah, like he's Remus the Smith. <laughs> Who's you've done he, this? You've done this twice now. Him. He's my anytime try score. You've said Sorry. Remus Smith and he handled Dylan. he handled Suwali. Yeah, that was one on one battle. That mm. was old school sort of shit. He yeah, he fucking was nice. had him, mate. He He's had, solid, bro. He Remus so- Smith is a, a he, solid Kiwi. He'll be a Kiwi international for a long time. Yeah, he, I think he'll take uh, overtake Pet. You know how Pet's yeah, been I, that I, underrated I, outside back Kiwi for him. If he didn't do his knee last year, he would have been in the. I agree. Oh, he would have been. He's, he's, he was that center we're missing. Yeah, that big on the body out there that can handle yep. like any big body in the world. We have and to he, put, he handles Suwali quite well. Yep. And they went at it. They went at it. So respect to Remus Smith. 
Well, he's my anytime try scorer. Three dollars sixty. That's jam. That right side, that left side for fucking Manly's been awful for the last mm. couple of weeks. Dom Dom Young four tries. I think fucking Dylan Edwards scored right, and majority I've uh, scored four tries. The majority of them were on the right. Fuck, Bizzer chipped in for a couple. They've been all sorts. Of that Where's left Saab been? Is Saab on that Saab side? Has, Saab started his first game back on the right. They'll have that Raymond Vega come in for um, Ruben Gaz. Is out for HIA. Um, Cooper Johns goes onto that left edge. If Shuey doesn't play, I dare say they're going to be targeting oh. him. Don't know the inside they're and outs. Get, they're going to get Coops. touched. They're going to touch up. Present fullback. Does that excite you? Fuck yeah, I love present fullback. I actually, I actually, as good as Meaty's been going this year, this is my favourite spine for them. Aaron Woods. Yeah, Woods is on Woods the bench. Is playing. Good on you, mate. Shaz. What about big Shaz? Um, what I'm just saying here. Jason Saab's sideburns are fucking hilarious. What about the third degrees on him? <laughs> What's he doing? I didn't mind him. He's probably the only one who could pull that look off. No. Nah. Don't you to those sideburns. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of him. No. I love Saab. Great kid. I had a bit to do with him through Normie, the, t- uh, the Dragons back in the day. You would have had a bit with to do with first, him, Rog. With your first, with your first, first uh, game back. First game back, you need to win and win. score fucking four tries. And win well. Yeah. With Shave those, those fuck- I think off. he's got rid of them already. Shave them off. That's if that a- was Wayne Bennett coaching, you're not even fucking rocking up in the game. That's a statement, bro. You got to fucking. Hey, I'm yeah. not. Hey, look, again, I love the boys expressing themselves, but I'm also like, we're a little, we're a little bit the old school and it's too OG. Right? down a bit. You don't even fucking rock those third degrees unless you score two of the best yeah. and you beat the fucking back to back champs. And Dom Young, he could have rocked him after that game. <laughs> yeah. Four tries. Yeah, four tries. He's all right. Yeah. And that's why he can. He's got the fucking dreads of doom. I'm doing. Yeah, I'm. I'm all Melbourne here. So all am I. Melbourne. I'm like, this would be this. This would be probably one of the games where I've come out and absolutely hammered Manly for fucking five minutes and they fucking win. But unless I can't, I can't see any other. Unless Tom Trebojevic, you know, it's been six games and he just puts on a fucking Tom Trebojevic in twenty twenty one. That's it, but it's hard to do against Melbourne. Exactly. And Melbourne are full of confidence. They're the best team in the comp at the moment. They're Pen- f- Penrith they're f- and Melbourne. Penrith and Melbourne. Both two form, form teams. Broncos. They had one slip up. Oh, I still sorry. think Broncos. And the, and the Broncos. Yep. yep. Um, yeah. Fucking storm. I just, yeah, there's, there's, it's, it's, I think it's pretty straightforward for me. Um, the Ford Pack still, again, on paper, but it's a tradesman's like Ford Pack. I don't mind Alicia, Alicia Katoa as well for a bit anytime jam. He'll be he'll be he'll be marking, he'll be going head to head with Cooper Johns. Like the talent that he had at, at um Warriors. At the Warriors, the Warriors yeah. it was only going to get better if he went to a really good club. I'm I'm glad to see uh, Toa for Foa Sipley in there. I love T Sips. I reckon he should yeah, have been in there from the good. start. Still want to see more more from Paseka. More. Like if I if I was if I was a coach, I'd be like just back in the day, like just say if you if you want to just your stock stay in the game, you just you used to call it a twenty twenty. Give me twenty tackles, twenty hit ups. Mm. See how you go. Just sell it. Just fucking give me that basic. Fucking give me sixty minutes. Give me twenty twenty, and just see. Just fucking doesn't matter how you get the ball. Just give me that. And then was, usually usually sets the standard. Of how you're going to play, and uh, like you know, 20 hit ups should usually be about 180 mm. meters, 100, 200 meters depends on. My 2020 was 20 meters and 20 effective supports. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever you really want to go back to basics as a front rower, you go 2020. That's all it is. That's a that's a that's a fucking Marco Mealy stat. He used to love that. Yeah. Fucking nice little baseline. Just a baseline. Yeah. It is. You know where you're sitting then. If you're doing 20 and you're getting 120 meters. You're getting bashed. Warriors back at Mount Smart hosting the Cowboys oh, Saturday fuck. three o'clock local it's time. It's a fucking hard one to pick, man. Well, the, our friends at the tab think the same. The, uh, yeah. The odds are split at a dollar ninety. Line is at one and a half, but North Queensland are two bucks. Warriors are a dollar eighty. How do you see this one going? One side that sort of played well but lost quite badly last week in the Warriors and, and, and a side that just isn't meeting expectations currently. Yeah, so on paper you think the Cowboys, they got Murray Tullingy back, Jeremiah Nana come, and I come back, but even with, with those two guys, they weren't playing to their capabilities. I think the, the one good performance that they had, and it wasn't even a full game, was the first half against the Raiders in round one. Apart from that, they've been fucking... 
pretty average. So uh, another game that they – what was the other game that they won? The Titans. The Titans. That, wasn't, that wasn't super impressive. So – Fuck him, man. Tomato yeah. Martin's out again too. He looks like he's uh he's fractured his, his leg. He's done something to the – it didn't look good. It looks like he could be out for an extended period. I feel so sorry for him, man. I've got to – Yeah. He's soft been, spot, eh? Hey? He's been – he's got, got a mad soft spot for him. From where – you know, what he went through, you know, a couple of years out of the league, come back. I thought he was really good for the Broncos last year and he's been close to one of the best buys of the season, not only for the Warriors but mm. I think across the board. So I'm disappointed for him. Um, Dill Walker goes in that six. See, that's going to take away from what they do well was Dill Walker coming on and play through the middle as well. So um, because of that, reluctantly, this is my last chance on the Cowboys. Same. I'm this with is, you. This is my last chance. I'm thinking exactly the same. Nanai Hess, back bro, Mitchell Dunn, Ruben Cotter's back now. They've got close to the full fucking compliment. Who else? Again, sucks. They're missing Griffin Neem and um, Hylam Luki are out as well. Griffin so. Neem was outstanding last mm, week. He was. Is what happened to him? still out. Oh, Nanai's back. No, Nanai's back in. Jordan McLean. No, McLean's still out as well. Yeah, okay. So Mitchell Dunn was pretty good? Yeah, Dunn's right. I thought they were right last week. And then they just... I don't know. There's just something missing, isn't there? Something missing. I'm not sure. I wouldn't be su- look. <laughs> this, yeah, this is my last one. I said before, Cowboys and Sharks. Again, the wires have been unreal. This sitting in fifth. If they go over and beat the Warriors over there, I'll start to say, all right, I'm starting to see signs of their back. But, um, nah. yeah, fuck, I can't. You know I'm what? I'm, 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 I'm Cowboys. I'm I tell Cowboys. you what, I'm more I'm more confident in my anytime jam. Jeremiah and I, he comes back, he scores. Even though even in games where they haven't been it's winning, immoral. he's still scoring. And yeah. you can get that at the juicy odds of three dollars. That's overs for Jeremiah and I. Yeah. I think that I think I think our friends at the tub have forgotten uh, how yeah. well he goes over. Only seventeen tries last year. Jeez. Uh, but yeah, picking the games a tough one. Wise fans at home, we gave you your flowers. Guess what? You fucked us. <laughs> did see that I did that big spill all last week you're not talking about the wires and I've skipped you fucking don't respect well you lost to the Knights and they fucking suck in my opinion too (laughs) Knights have been going good man their efforts have been good but they still suck no I'm only kidding I love it there's a couple of Knights boys but still the Knights um, they're no no world beaters that should have been a very beatable game so therefore boys how do we see this game going yeah I'm yeah, gonna I'm gonna flip a coin was. on the day. Got a coin on you, uh, DJ Tiger? Nah, mate. Not here. Uh, <laughs> not here. <laughs> what do you keep? I don't. <laughs> All right. No, my only thing I'm confident on is Jeremiah Nano anytime. All right, moving Fans on. Fans at home, pick it yourself. Can't pick that game. Newcastle will host Penrith Saturday. Penrith. Five thirty. Thanks, mate. Uh, Tab thinks so as well. Dollar uh, sixteen favourites. Newcastle out at a healthy five dollars and twenty cents. Line sits at four and a half. Fourteen and a half. Fourteen and a half. My apologies. You really need to zoom that in. All right. Well, uh, Newcastle have been playing well, but obviously this line sits at fourteen and a half. Can they get inside? <clears throat> yeah. Jokes aside, to the Newcastle fans, he's been unreal. I was only fucking around. Um, yeah, they've been good, mate. The the Knights are starting to get a bit of troops back. Um, shout out to their wingers, bro. Dom yeah. Young the and back Greg five, Mazu. Man. The back five. Greg, yeah. Lockie Millers, obviously yeah. he's getting all his flowers. Gags you know what? You, you know what? I think they've done it twice this year now as well. Dom Young catching that ball in goal and then attacking straight away yeah. and coming straight through the guts. This is the thing with Greg Marzu. This is what he's capable of. This is the frustrating thing for me watching him mm. for the Titans. He'd have these games. He's always going to get 200. He's getting 200 like. Yeah. He can get 210 carries because and, and not even have a carry over 20 meters. Yeah. So he's averaging 20 per carry because that's who he is. But he had real bad, awful defensive reads. He's uh, fixed. They're doing a good job in Newcastle. He hasn't been. I don't know if teams aren't really attacking him too much or... Um, He's got a good little combination with Brad Bradman Best there on the left edge, but he's been good. So without those um, awful reads that he was doing, you know, had last year at the Gold Coast yeah. Titans, he's been solid for them. Well, he's been coached up, hasn't he? Mm. Well, I see uh, Liam Martin is back, but he's been put on the reserves. He's named number 20. So I yep. don't see him being number 20. Unless he's going to th- play? I think, I think he's – unless – I'm not sure. I think he comes in and takes Lindsay Smith's spot. 
or you know he takes Sorensons or something like that. You start Smith, him. Someone, Smith. someone someone goes Lindsay back. Smith. Someone goes back to the bench because you can't you can't leave that kid in reserves. No way. You are starting him or you put him on the bench. He's too good. And I think him being back, he'll really steal up that forward pack. And I just don't think I don't think they're they're on a tear. Penrith at the moment. Mm. No one's going to touch him. I thought it was going to. T- I thought it was going to take him a little bit longer to get kicking. Like I think you know if you watch some of the early weeks, I was like. I sort of seen a little downfall, like not a downfall. Um, I could see them having a dip to start yeah. the year, and I thought maybe their timing would come around Origin once they start getting trees back together. But they're just as formidable as they've been in the last couple of years, man. It's been surprising. I thought they're going to take a lick with some of the yeah. players that are missing, especially with the fact that Liam Martin's been out for the last couple of weeks too, and Fisher yeah. Harris missed last week, yeah. and he's out for another couple of weeks. They're just a fucking well oiled yeah, machine, man. They are. It's their back freaks. five as well, bro. So this is yeah. going to be a mad battle of the back fives, bro. Essentially, they're the same sort of players. I know Dylan Edwards has got more runs on the board, but he's just another lucky Miller. Chew the fucking yards up. As soon as you get kick chase, bring it back as quickly as you can. Dance, hop around a bit, have a good little base. Taruva and Toto, although they're different sizes yeah. to Maju and Dom Young, essentially it's the same thing. Work hard. And then... um. The system they got out there, man. <clears throat> Stephen so Crichton and Toto's... Crichton's killing it. Defensively, bro. They've been unreal, man. Brian Toto's on another level. Isaac Tungo is c- killing it. I can't... I cannot fault that back line, man. And the forwards, Moses Leota, they're just following him. He's running that fucking hard. Did you see his first hit up last yeah. week off the kickoff? Yeah. Oh, my he's an animal. goodness. Well, he's he, an absolute beast. When I questioned the game last week, I was like, they've only got one person and mm. like obviously that one person is fucking Moses Leota I, Isaiah Yeo's the lock but yeah but he's more physically class. he's more their finesse and their class yeah, and well, shit right they're going to be taking first hit ups man. yeah you know what I mean like Leo, Moses is their Leota tone setter to set the he took it personal it's yeah. like we say about plays you know we talked about this on the way in mate about being a 1A 1B yeah. or are you a fucking number one front rower yeah. Moses Leota said fuck this Harris is, Fisher Harris is out I'm that fucking I dude come with dude. me it's going to be a hard one for Newcastle this will be a little bit of a gauge to where Newcastle is going to be at by the end of the year. You know what I mean? Like you're mm. going to go, you know, we're going to go toe to toe with um, Penrith. What is it? Saturday night in Newcastle. Can we can we go toe to toe with them? What 60, 70 minutes? You know what mm. I mean? It's just like, are we going to get towed up? I don't think. I don't think. I think this will be closer than you think. Okay. I honestly, do it'll be a real good game. Yep, Newcastle at home. Um, I'm going Penrith. I think they win comfortably. I, I think, think they yeah. cover. I'm with you. And I'm uh, on Nathan Cleary anytime jam. Three dollars thirty. He's I been think, close. Been throwing those dummies. Well, he got he got he got the last one last yeah. week as well. And I think he kicks it off with the first one this week. The Prince. Love the Prince against Newcastle. I got him first try scorer against Penrith last year. He just looks dangerous near the line. Just really looks dangerous. Penrith for you, mate. Yeah. Yep. All right, Saturday, 7.30, another fucking Queensland derby. Gold Coast Titans take on Brisbane. Our friends at the tab have Brizzy as favourites at $1.32. Titans at, at $3.40. Nine and a half is the line. Fozzie's back. Brisbane going to mm. bounce back, mm. or is it not that simple? It's a tough one. Titans have been better this year. Um, mm. They were they were unbelievable against the Dragons. You know, that was a good... I was going into Sunday thinking... A couple of awful games, the the Titans versus Dragons and Newcastle against the Warriors. They were fucking both really high quality games. Mm. And look, we joke again, I want to reinforce, we joke a lot about when I've, you know, ripped teams. All four of those teams have been impressive this year. They're having a good crack, man. Even the Dragons, like yeah. that game was there to be had, you know, a little laps there at the end. Happy for Toby Sexton, um, who looks to have been completely dropped now that Fozzie's come back. I feel for the poor fella because hey, well, Oh, is he? Did he get yeah, injured? Did he? He would have got dropped anyway. He would have got maybe dropped to the bench. Yeah, he probably would have got dropped. Yeah. But I was happy for him because um, there were a lot of expectations around him a couple of years ago and didn't go to plan last year. They got rid of Fogarty, but they've brought Foz up there and uh, that's the sort of performance you want to have, scoring the winning try for your team, hitting mm. the badge. Um, he always speaks well, so I'm happy for him. Broncos, probably the more... Probably the most disappointing team of the round. Even though the Raiders were fucking dogs and they earned it, I still think there's, there's only one team that could go up there. It's fucking Raiders. Mm. One and do one, that to them. One. They have bashed they, them out of it. Yeah, but have they won one game? Like that, their first yeah, they win? no, they had one win yeah. earlier in the year. Yeah, and they go up there. Re, Jordan Rapana, the energy that he holds in that. Well, he team, was close to my dog of the week. He, yeah, fu- yeah, hundred percent. But I had to go horse, bro. Yeah, you got to go the horse, bro. 
but he is an animal. He was like he's like their spiritual leader. Like he just like leads. I'd everything. love to play with Raps. Yeah, like he's just an animal. So, There's not many wingers. So aggressive, mate. There's so not many wingers I love, where I, I go. Love the, I love the way he plays, man. But it, Selwyn and Cobbo, right? You know yeah. when everyone was like sort of going, uh, Latrell's the next GI and all that sort of shit. Like I think Latrell's his own person, right? I think Selwyn and Cobbo is the closest mm. thing to to um to GI. Do you think he's a closer comp? Yeah. He's just not. He's 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 tall. He, gl- he's he tall, glides like he glides G-I-A. like him. He's got that left arm carry, strong as hell. Starting on the wing, you know what I mean. You probably moving to the centers, trying to get to fullback, all those sort of positions. But he remi- he reminds me more of Gi than Latrell does. You know what? And this is this is this is the ultimate compliment. This is you know, all three of them. This is why Gi is who he is, and why people and look compare. how great they are. And Gi is still above them. But you know you know why? And it's not even like this is not even dismissing the other two. I think Gi has both Latrell's power, and he also glides like Cobo used to glide. Yeah. you know what I mean. I think Cobo is just quicker. Quicker than Latrell, yeah. he's taller. He's more. He's more lean. He doesn't have the Latrell body shape. He's lean. He gets up like you know what I mean. He's he just, mm. as soon as he goes, as soon as he that try on the weekend, as soon as he was gone, he's fucking no one's catching him. Mm. Same as when like GI used to get away. Like no one's catching him. Mm. No one. It doesn't matter who you are. So he's probably the closest thing. That try he scored, like he just took. He took both those two blokes on. They're about a hundred kilo each. And just went fucking bang, hit my left shoulder. Which one was that? I'm trying to think. First it. try. He just I, he I'm went fucking out. having a blank on that try. Who, Cobo? Cobo did. I can't remember, Do you remember for that some try? reason. I'll pull it up. Pull it up. But he just went at him. Like, it was just like an early ball, early ball. He's the winger there. Two blokes coming across, trying to get at him. And he just went, fuck it. He just leaned straight into him and then still put the ball down. Have a look at it. Yeah, live reacts. That's right. We can pause it and start. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I just, I'm I, having, I, I'm I having a full on blank on it. I watch the game for sure. You know what it is? Well, it was his first try. But with this game here, like, I think Titans. This is this is the lo- this is the local derby, right? I mean, other than Redcliffe, but um. Oh yes, I do remember it. I like big Tino versus Payne Haas. You know who that reminds me of, bro? You know he used to do that well? Georgie Defoe used to do that yeah, real well. Sh- and oh. are not, not enough wingers do it this day. Instead of doing the fucking big jump to the side and jumping out and putting yeah. your arm out where you can get it knocked and the ball gets knocked out, take the contact. And then was Georgie the was the king at it. Georgie Defoe. Yeah, you know he got that off. Get Matt Utah. Yes, Shit. Matty was the OG. Yeah. Matt uh, Tyo does it. But I'm looking forward to this forward pack. Tino, Payne Haas. I want to see for feet because these blokes, you know, they're, they're everyone who is a Queenslander that has, that is not playing for the Brisbane Broncos at the moment. They all think that the Broncos brushed them, so they all they all hold this shit personal, and they want to go to all, every time they play against Brisbane, it's always personal. So all these guys, do you know what I mean? Like with Big Tino, he's like, "Why the fuck did you let me out of this system?" Foda Wake has been good this year too. Foda Wake has been outstanding. Like he's a he's he's a Queenslander as well. You know, so you got these guys, David Fafita, why didn't you keep me? I didn't really want to go. You paid me 1.2, that's probably why I went. No, I think, but- you, I think you did want to go. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all juniors and they all want to come back and fucking beat the Bronx. I seen it's, uh, it's going to be closer than you think. I seen uh, Kempe uh, and uh, Cam Smith spoke spoke on their potty and Dave Fafita come out and said he wants to get back in Origin too. So Mate, he needs this. Going head to head. Luke, Kurt, K- Kurt Capewell, ceiling. both playing... Uh, you know, he, needs to, he needs to come up. He, he needs to go against Payne Haas. You know what I mean? Like, because we're, you know, Payne Haas is our man in New South Wales. I want to see David Fafita go at it. Like, go in the middle. Like, we, you know, like Origin's different. You're not going to sit on your edge and get all the pretty ball. You know, you have to come in the middle and just fucking show everyone how tough you are. And that's what he's been doing. He's been doing that. That's what everyone wants to see. He's yeah. the most damaging ball runner in the game. Fuck, we've got some good wing combinations in the game at the moment, man. Like, even if you look at the Titans, like, Khan Pereira and Phil Sammy have been fucking really good yeah, for the Phil Titans Sammy as well. Had a blinder last week. Pereira's good, man. He's quick. It's rapid. This is going to be a good little Fuck, game. Fuck, this is man. hard. This is going to be a good little game. I'm going the Titans. You're going to go to the Titans? Uh, yeah, yeah like I'm going the Titans. I really want to go. I'll take the plus nine and a half for sure. Give me that because I think it's going to be pretty close. These guys, these these two are a little bit closer. Give me the Bronx though, and give me Reese Walsh. She fucked one up trying to do an offload over the line to sell on Cobo. Yeah. You see that? Um, I think he gets it right. I think he has a run mentality this week more so than because. Even that ball to Cobo, right? Because now I remember the ball. Now I'm thinking mm. about that play. That dart that he threw to Cobo to score that try. If he doesn't throw it 
inch perfect. Yeah. Cobo doesn't score, so they're doing a good job, but I think he has a run first mentality and give me Reese Walsh anytime is, jam, $2.25. Is Tony Staggs a chance for Origin? Well, he's if, again. If you're thinking about putting Turbo on the wing, on the right wing. I'd have Campbell they, Graham they, over him at the moment. Yeah, okay. He's fucking. He's. He's making a fair. I'd, argument. I'd have he's Joseph, a fair argument. I'd have Joseph Sawley, despite all the rugby union shit, still over both Campbell Graham and Katoni, mm. and Stephen Crichton, and he's whoever, whatever other what wing. Crichton. What do we do with Stephen Crichton? Yeah, he ain't gonna. Make gonna it. I mean, we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about this soon, but mm. like, fuck, mate. These are, this is all going to be coming up to form, right? You've got to be hitting form and when, when and origin and injuries, obviously. And but injuries. you put everybody fit. No one's injured at the moment. No one's injured. Everyone's well, Fox, playing. Fox, Fox and Fox. Turbo doesn't look 100. You know, but like you're still you're picking Turbo regardless. And Fox didn't play last year. So it's not like he's an incumbent. And we lost last if year. If Turbo's still hobbling around like he is now for another fucking three to four weeks, he's still comfortable picking him in origin just because of who he is? Yeah. he's that dude? Yeah. But we, we lost last year. So the thing is, like, when oh, yeah, you lose, true. you know, you, 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 get, you might go for some of these smokies. Mm. Sunday, 2 o'clock. I'm not real fucking confident about going for the Titans, but I'm just going to go there. Let's go. Yep. Broncos for me. Reese Walsh, anytime jam. Sundays. Sunday, 2 o'clock. Canberra will host St. George. Our friends at the tab have Canberra favourites, $1.48. St. George Illawarra, $2.65. Line sits at... Six and a half. Six and a half. Fuck, I need glasses. All right, two sides at one last... We're looking at the same thing. Yeah, mate. <laughs> Tell Tau Moga's back in. Good on you. Tell Tau Oh, Tell Tau Oh, yeah, Moga. Oh, yeah. Wow. Moga's back in. Two sides at one last week. Um, who comes over the chocolates this week? How hard is it to pick these games this, this, this year, eh, mate? Because there's no teams that are like no. even with even you know even the Tigers, right? As bad as they've been this year, we're going into that West game against Paragon. Oh, Maybe yeah, yeah, I don't know. Oh, Charlie Staines had something. <laughs> Poor he bastard. Had a, he had a great. He had a great game. Yeah, apart he was from good. That. Yeah, I, I've, I felt so great. sorry for him. Like he would have. <laughs> Ten out, nine times out of ten, he's catching all those balls. Yeah, yeah. they went short all day, and then, and then stabbed one. It was long. nice little tactic too. Yeah. You see a little bit. Actually, we'll get to the power after this. Um, <sighs> God, I can't pick this game again, man. These games are so hard to pick. You almost look, look how because because this team is. I'm almost taking the points more often than not, just because the games are so close, and it wouldn't surprise if the underdogs win. So if you can get six and a half, which a lot of the punters have got at the tab as well, dollar eighty five. I think that's the play, man. With the Dragons because I can't see the Dragons proper blowing the. Dra- I mean, I can't see the Raiders proper blowing the Dragons out. I'm 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 all Raiders at the moment. You gonna go Raiders yeah. after that performance? Just yeah. after that performance, it's, it's just got to breed confidence into their side. I mean, I know St George. I, I rate St George are physical as well. Georgia physical. It'll be a bang it'll, fest. It'll be right up Canberra's alley. Yeah, Jack White back. Does that does that sway even further? Yeah, not really. I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't it doesn't really like. So I mean, I just it all comes back. And- no, not really. I just thought they played so outstanding last it's- week. I think Jack White is just Jack White. And he's a yeah. great player, but it just doesn't really sway. Like I didn't even look at it like that. Okay. I just think their forward pack is just they're brutal, and I love that Tomoko kid Hopawati played outstanding. Croker, I was so happy for Croaks last week. Fucking Nick Cotri, Sebastian a- Chris. Was outstanding last. He's week. been unreal, mate. He I had a big question mark on them because of Xavier yeah, Savage because was now. He's been so good at fullback. Not in only that game, he's probably been their best in all the games that they've lost yeah, as well. I agree. Nick so, Kotrick yeah. back on the wing. Albert Hopawati, That's one of the best games that I've seen Junior Hopper yeah. play as well. I'm 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 camera all the way. St George, they actually lost last week. I don't know why I said what I said. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah lost to the close one against the the Titans. Yes, um, again, man, like. Uh, Fuck, another name to throw in there, bro. Zach Lomax is fucking wants it this year, bro. It's going good. Zach Lomax is getting after it. And he's yeah. sort of got that little bit of shit, you know, that obviously off the back of that frizz thing that happened last year, you can see that he's got a real more focused mentality. Yeah, he ain't getting in into he, – he, normally he likes a little bit of push and shove. Yeah. He ain't even doing that now. Um, even when he's scoring, he's not Yahoo. Yep. He's, not, he's, not, he's not about that. I can, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go the dragons. I got Teletel Mono for my anytime try scorer. Um, Five dollars. I think the crowd that Zach, Zach is uh, hanging out with is a lot different than what he's been dealing with for the last three or four years. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, you a said lot, that. A lot different. Like he's you been, said, yeah, he's yeah. Lot, you ran into him at the fights and that. Yeah, yeah. He's a lot more um, just chill. Yeah. 
Fuck, it'll be All right. That'll be a good game, man. Fucking yeah, the best the one. best thing about the NRL last game before we get into it, DJ Tiger Town. Fuck there's some good games. Even this game's gonna be a cracker. Yeah. Fucking Well, if you can't get up for this game, if you've got the Bulldogs jersey on, you don't belong in that club. Because this is a rival game that goes back into the eighties, so it does not matter. I don't give a fuck what happened to our boys last week. I don't care what happened yeah, to Parramatta. When you're ready. When you're We're done. just on. We just need to be on. That's it. We're playing against Parramatta. Sunday, what else do you fucking want? You're at Parramatta Stadium, 4 o'clock. You, wouldn't, you just wouldn't want to be anywhere in the world. 4 p.m. If you're a Bulldogs player, where else would you want to – where else would you rather be? And furthermore, you fuckers are outsiders, so you can put that up in the dressing sheds. You're paying three dollars ten as per the tab. Ooh. Parramatta a dollar thirty eight. Lines at eight and a half. Oh, that's disrespectful. I love what? it. I love it. Okay. That's off the that, that's blown out off the back of the kicks news. So disappointing, Mace. Obviously, yeah, with a, kicks. I mean, like, yeah, you know, it's it was a football football injury. You know, like he just he leads the way in everything um, when it comes to line speed. You know, he puts his body on the line all the time. He doesn't go half hearted in anything. Mate, it was just a simple drill. Come and square off A, bloke got him on the inside, hand out, perfect weight, arm out, bang. Fuck, that's It was just, it sucked. And I was, I was right behind him, mm. you know what I mean? Because I'm making sure they're coming off the line square and then, and then hunting and all that kind of stuff. So I think, you know, Ciro was, me and Ciro would just sort of stand there and we looked at him and went, oh, fuck. Didn't think, worst case scenario, we didn't think that mm. um, it was going to be a peck. We just thought, fuck, hopefully it's just like a fucking cork on his arm or just something, just Something that wasn't yeah. a, yes. a peck, um, you know, and, you know, we got the news, I think, uh, this morning and it's just, you know, he's shattered. Mm. And I think it's, you're talking about probably six to ten weeks yep. for, for a peck. Gone are the days. Remember Luke Bailey used to do his uh, peck nearly every year? Mm. It was fucking six to eight months. Mm. You're done for the year. You yeah. rule it out. So. I remember about ten years ago there was like a – fucking peck ep- epidemic yeah. where it happened to yeah, everyone well, yeah, well, and then it's been pretty good recently so they must have good. changed their trainings and stuff yeah, like that to, um, it's got, still an injury that can happen at any it does time. you know like if you know like um it's just it's fucking easy you know what i mean like you just got wrong footed arm out bang weight all that kind of stuff uh tavita Pangai jr is back Yep, how good. Oh, and I excited? am fucking pumped for that kid. A couple He's of the big dogs back. Junior, Junior Bolo and... Yeah, Junior uh, Polo, Pangai Junior. We're putting him uh, you know, straight in the starting lineup. Just the energy that he brings. He's been in a really good, really good place mentally. He's been training like a fucking machine. I just wouldn't want to fuck with him, eh? Like I just hopefully he loves going after Parrot too. Yeah, he's gonna. He's, yeah, he, he, he made it personal last year. He when does, they he, and he needs. You know, we need him at his best for us to um to get over this team because they're they're a good team. Parrot, mm. Junior Paulo, Campbell Gillard. You know what I mean? Like there's some um they their momentum comes off those two. Mm. Junior's someone a, needs to get shut down. Junior's their emotional leader. Sean Lane comes back. He'll he'll, he'll be good after a, another week. Brycey yeah. Cartwright's done well. He's solidified no, that right edge back row good. as well. Ryan Madison's been going good. Sean Lane, they're they're a good team. Um, they'll bit they'll bit um they'll bit rusty. Sean Russell and Hayes Dunster, but I like both like them long term yeah. as well for Para. You know, Reed Marty against his old side. Max King. Oh yeah, Reedy will be pumped. Yeah, it'll be. Good game, about the Reedy? It'll be yeah, real good game. But like, Reedy's going to get fucking we crazy. We've, we've been losing that that presence in the middle. It would have been great to have kicks out there. Yeah, and and Pangai, because then you're talking about two blokes that'll fucking kill you. Yeah. Um. You and know, then but, also with Preston and King, yeah, a, a week removed more yeah, from that eye is, and the fucking you know, finger. And, and it's and it it is what it is. That's rugby league. You get injured, and we're going to miss kicks for about you know eight weeks, and. All these other guys just need to step up, mm. uh, and I'm pretty sure they're going to. They, you don't really need to motivate both these teams to play, so I can't wait to get out there. Is there additional motivation after the result last week? Has to be. You know, no one, no one wants to get fifty put on them. No, you know, it, can't it wait for the pretty, can't wait for pretty, next week. On those some pretty games. brutal like conversations going on this week. Um, honest. You know, like people like you know, like you, you, when things like that happen, you you don't really know why, and everyone was pretty honest with each other, and some home truths were said, but it was all in you know, it was nothing that I haven't seen before. Mm. You know what I mean? With good clubs, good clubs do that. You know, the coaches that we have, like with Ciro, he's all about that. He's a great coach. He's a great leader. And he gets the best out of his players. And everyone's a little bit shocked why it happened, but we went through the video and it was like fucking, you know, one of those games you don't really want to watch. Like mm. you know, me being not even playing, I didn't want to watch. Yeah, and you know, compared to these kids who had who lived it, 
you know, they had to go through it and it is what it is. That's what you got to do to get better. And the last couple of days, you know, having three days off, coming back yesterday, little refresh, ripping in, reset. fucking wrestling and all this sort of brutal sort of stuff. Then today was brutal. It was just like, you know, hardcore training, like just ripping in. They got through the day. Two, they got through the two days and they, they'll have tomorrow off. And then, you know, the Friday, Saturday will be pretty back, – you back right off. Yep. And then just roll into Sunday. And you don't have to be um, – you don't have to be motivated to play against these guys. Not in this, then in these sorts of games. No. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday Arvo, 4 p.m. at Para, Combank. Mate, stop where it. The fuck else would you rather be, mate? All right. Despite all that, OG, apologies. I'm going Parramatta. I'm going the Eels. I'm going my boy <clears throat> Tracker, Clinton Gutherson, anytime try scorer at $2.05. As always, we want everyone to be playing safe during this footy season. So please keep front of mind what are you really gambling with? And if you need free and confidential support, call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. And also, just to wrap it up, you can find all of these current LPC bets under the Bets Friends banner. I'm going to be updating day by day. So I'm going to try to have one Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday moving forward. And we're also going to have the Grateful Eight, which is Campbell Graham, $2.60 $2.60 against the Dolphins. Egan Butcher, $4.25 against the Cronulla Sharks. Uh, Remus Smith, $3.60 against the Manly Seagulls. All of them away, actually. All four away. Jeremiah Nanai for the North Queensland Cowboys against the Warriors. Nathan Cleary, again, away, $3.30 against the Knights. Reese Walsh away, $2.25. I'm just realizing this as you... Ooh, except for Parrot last game. Reese Walsh, $2.25 against the Gold Coast Titans. Teleto Amonet, $5 against the Dragons. I really like that bet. And Gutho, the only home team I've got. And just to finish off, our Levels Punters Club's Bets Friends Channel Special. So, OG, you know, I like to play a little bit of golf. My golf's been improving, played a little bit of comp. Yeah. Just happened to play with Egan Butcher this morning. Ooh. So I'm on the Butch. He's part of my anytime try scorer. Um, just Did you like, ask him if he's like, do you feel confident this week? And he, I think he's a pretty humble dude. He would never say that. No, no, no. You're just going no, off. Mate, we're, an omen bet. No, we're, we're golf fanatic, fan, fanatics. So it was all, it's all just all golf chat. But uh, I was looking at him. Good. I was hoping he's going to be on the right edge because <laughs> – are you sure he's on the? Are you sure he's, on the, he's on the left? Fuck! I was hoping he was on the right anyway because I was thinking he's got this nice little baby fade. So when he when he hits his golf ball, it just goes like like that, and I'm like, oh, I can just see him running outside that nice right. I can see him running that nice right edge hole. Well, so now ooh, maybe on that it could be cold line. Could, cold it could line. be an out ball. Damn. It could be an out ball. So Egan Butcher to score inside the first sixty minutes against the Sharks and OG. I think the Panthers cover the line against the Knights 14 and a half, even though it's a big one. I think there's a reason that line's big because people see this game. I think that, yeah, I think Panthers. So um, that's paying $12 with a max bet of $25. As always, gamble responsibly. Have a good weekend. Enjoy your footy, and I'll see you next week on the review. See you.